It's time for the excitement of NCAA Division II football, featuring the Shepherd University Rams and the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. Today's play-by-play coverage is being brought to you by Hagerstown Ford. We deliver to your home. Ford of Hagerstown.com. Panhandle Dumpsters, because you have a choice. PanhandleDumpsters.com. The Marius Group. Start planning for a brilliant future. The Joe Ferretti Law Office in downtown Martinsburg, delivering first-rate service and results for our clients. Green Tree Realty, a great place to call home. Jackie Lewis Broker. GreenTreeRealty.com. Mike Folk for Governor. Accountable, ethical, responsible. Folk for WV.com. And by Smallwood and Small, an Erie affiliate. Total Insurance Solutions. Standing by is our TV10 broadcast team. So let's head to the field and get today's pregame show underway. And a very pleasant good afternoon, everyone. Welcome into Memorial Stadium. We are in Clarion, Pennsylvania, where we are high atop the press box in the field as we get ready for today's NCAA Division II and Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference matchup as the Clarion Golden Eagles will play host to your Shepherd University Rams. Along with Matt Crawford, I'm Matt Miller. John Alderton behind the camera. Eric Sterick is down on the sideline with the camera as well. He's running our sling unit as our on-site producer, thanks to Caleb Valero, who is back at the studio. It's TV 10 coverage of Shepard Rams football, and Matt looking forward to this one. A big game for both of these teams for Clarion. They're trying to get somewhere they haven't been since 2015, and that's three wins and no losses to start a season. Yeah, and you talk about that 2015 season for Clarion. It wasn't just three straight wins to open the season. It was seven, but after those seven consecutive wins, four losses to end that season. So starting 7-0 and then finishing 7-0 and four so they're in uncharted waters for every member of this football team right now so they're trying to improve the three and oh shepherd uh, trying to put together a complete football game we have yet to see that uh, they uh, blew a lead in the first game against ohio dominican and really coasted to the victory last week against mercyhurst a big defensive game so i guess i should say coasted offensively the defense has stepped up tremendously in both games and especially that big goal line stand the big fourth and three stop in the game against mercyhurst last week what does that tell you about this Shepherd Ram defense led by defensive coordinator Josh Klein, whom we will hear from a little bit later on in our pregame show? It, you mentioned it in week one, a touchdown comes with a minute and seven left, and Ohio Dominican took their first and only lead of the game and went on for that 24 to 21 victory over the Rams. Last week, the defense was called on not once, but twice on a third and goal at the one, a fourth and goal at the one. Mercyhurst tried the quarterback sneak each time could not get in and after a tough loss in week one the Rams get the 22 to 17 win last week what it means to me is that this defense is back and looking like it has looked in years past last year a down year for this defense especially when you look at that front seven and even young in the secondary but this year they have stepped up to the challenge they have faced two very good running football teams to start this season this clearing team running the football very well also uh, so you're looking at a front seven that has stepped up the first two games very well, keeping two teams that were rushing for about 150 yards a game or would rush for about 150 yards last season, uh, looking at Ohio Dominican, and they have kept them to under 100 in both of those games, so you need them to duplicate that kind of effort today if they want to get to above 500 and get to the second one of the year. And their work cut out for them because they're facing a clarion offense that is coming in here absolutely riding high, averaging 48 points a game after a 40 28-28 win at Shippensburg to open the season, and right here at home last weekend, a 48-20 victory over Lock Haven. This is an offense that is on a roll, ready to face a defense that likewise is playing very well. And you look at the offense, this is an offense last year that was only averaging about 192 yards through the air a year, or a game rather, and only 94 on the ground a game. You look at some of the stats this year, very good, a two, a pronged attack at quarterback. You're most likely going to see two guys throughout the game today and Malik McGriff in the backfield just a yard under 300 on the season so far through two games he's bouncing at a rate of 6.8 a carry so almost seven a carry 
Terry. Shepard's front seven going to have to step up in the game today. Well, the Rams got it done on the road last week to pick up their first win of the season. You look back to that 2010, well, let's go all the way back to the 2000 season, and Shepard on the road, 74 wins and 28 losses. They have won 33 of their last 39 on the road, looking to keep that uh, road hot streak going today as they play here in Clarion, Pennsylvania. Well, our pregame show is brought to you by Brown's Funeral Homes in Martinsburg, Inwood, Charlestown, Ranson, Robert Fields and Sons, a family-owned full-service funeral home proudly serving the area since 1880. Next up, we'll go in the locker room as we hear from not only head coach Ernie McCook, but today we'll hear from defensive coordinator Josh Klein as well. That's next as we continue with Shepherd Ram football on TV 10. It's one of the toughest times you'll ever face when someone close to you passes away. It's a swirl of papers to sign and arrangements to be made, all while you're dealing with grief. At Brown Funeral Home, we encourage you to pre-plan. Pre-planning not only makes things easier for you, it protects you from rising costs. At Brown Funeral Home, our families are precious to us, and so are yours. Brown Funeral Home, in Martinsburg, Inwood, and Charlestown, Ranson. Hi, this is Eric from Hagerstown Ford. I keep telling you that Hagerstown Ford has completely changed the car buying experience forever. And with a return policy easier than Walmart, Hagerstown Ford has a goal to deliver 350 cars and trucks per month. And when I say deliver, I mean deliver to you, where you are, just like Amazon does. And if you don't want it, return it. No questions asked. The only way Hagerstown Ford can accomplish this extremely aggressive goal is to make the car buying process fast and easy. We simply refuse to play the dumb back and forth games that most dealerships want to play. There's absolutely no reason for you to waste your precious time at a car dealership. I assure you, there is no dealership from Winchester, Virginia to Washington, D.C. that can beat our price. There's no dealership that will allow you to return your new car if you don't want it. Hagerstown Ford absolutely has the best price, and we'll bring the car to you. And if you don't want it, return it, period. No questions asked. There's no reason to buy anywhere else. Visit HagerstownFord.com to schedule your VIP experience and get your new ride delivered to you. Contact dealer for details. I mean, welcome you back into the Brown Funeral Home pregame show. It's time to go inside the locker room with head coach Ernie McCook. This segment brought to you by Parsons Ford. Uh, they're on Shepherdstown Road going towards Martinsburg or visit them online at ParsonsFordOfMartinsburg.com. They became number one by making you number one first Parsons. Uh, coach, after a win on Saturday, it's got to be a much better week of practice and not a happy week of practice after week one. <laughs> Yeah, it's always fun, the bus ride home after a road win and preparing for your next opponent. Uh, Sunday's meetings are a lot easier to, you know, take swallow and kind of work through. Um, so, yes, we've had a great week of practice. The weather's cooperated. Our kids have had great focus. So we're really excited about this football game Saturday. Before we get on to Claire, and let's just kind of wrap up uh, the win against Mercyhurst. I think one thing that uh, Ram fans are still looking for is the run game to get going. What has been the message of practice this week to really get that ground attack going? Well, you know, we just have to be better. I mean, we have to be able to execute in the run game. We have to be able to um, execute the scheme. We're close. Uh, we've had a couple things happen for us, and we just need to be consistent. And I think that's what we're missing. We're having breakdowns. It could be breakdowns up front. We could have missed, uh, missed assignments, whatever it may be. Uh, but we have to work out those kinks, and we have to get the run game in sync for us to be able to accomplish what we want to offensively. I know we talked in the beginning of the week, and execution was a big thing, not only overall in a game, but especially offensively once you get inside opponent territory. Is that just a case where you think the more it happens in a game, the more comfortable players will get? You know, I, I think it's just we have to have a good plan in place, and we have to execute the plan. Um, you know, those are the those that red zone, end zone, goal line. That's the toughest yards to get, and Mercyhurst will tell you the same thing. You know, it was the toughest yards for those guys to get last last week as well. So it's something that you have to have great focus on. Uh, we have to have a plan, and our players have to execute the plan. You're more of the offensive side, even though being a head coach, obviously more in tune with the offense. What do you see out of Clarion defensively that can give you guys trouble? Uh, they're a very sound defense. Uh, there's nobody out of place. They're going to be hard to get, um, you know, create space. Uh, I think that that's you know, what they do well. Uh, they're just well coached. 
and sound. Uh, so they have so two really good defensive ends. They got linebackers that are making plays. Their safety makes a lot of tackles. So they've they've got a very talented football team, and we're you know we've, we've got a great challenge ahead of us. Clarion looking at this on several message boards and just the era about them right now is that they're 2-0. and This is going to be one of the biggest games in their program's history in a long time. How much extra excitement does that give you guys to go in there and steal one from them and give them their first loss of the year? You know, our goal is to go and win every game we play, and our preparation all week is go up there and compete at a high level. Uh, we know they're a good football team. We know that they're playing extremely well, and we also are looking forward to that challenge. Uh, I think our players are, you know, the, the tape doesn't, low, doesn't lie. They've scored 48 points in each of the first two football games. They've played well on defense. They've done well in the kicking game. So the fact that we're going to be able to be challenged and our players will have to answer the, to the challenge. Shepard Ram head football coach Arnie McCook. This is the In the Locker Room segment. We'll be back with defensive coordinator Josh Klein next on the Brown Funeral Home pregame show. And we welcome you back into the Brown Funeral Home pregame show. Time to go back inside the locker room this week, changing things up a little bit, going to talk some defense with defensive coordinator Josh Klein. Coach, first of all, congratulations on the win and the big goal line stand you guys had last week. How did that feel that your defense really came up in a big situation like that? Thank you. It's, uh, you know, it feels great. Uh, the guys uh, have worked so hard since last season and to just see results um, that come out on the field. And, uh, you know, we gave up a, a short yardage touchdown early in the game, and we kind of recovered from that and, you know, got the right guys in the game, and they played well, executed their technique, and uh, it's definitely a huge boost for the guys that are on the field. Obviously that goal line stand is what everybody's going to talk about, keeping a score out directly, but that fourth down and three, equally big. What was it that you saw that you thought they were going to go play action on that? Yeah, they're, they're a team that uh, we were able to stop the, the run early on and uh, limit it to the run. So we saw the formation and, no, you know, you know, I think we can stop a fourth and three run. Now it's going to be some sort of play action. So our linebacker, we actually were we were all messed up on the play. Our, our uh, overhang is running across the field on the snap. He runs into the linebacker. I think that helped the linebacker get out to where he needed to be, and uh, he ended up right there on the running back to cover him. You guys have faced two very good running football teams in the first two weeks and really step up to the challenge. How much have you seen your front seven improve from last year? I, I think it's, 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 uh, it's leaps and bounds from last year just with uh, their age and how much experience they have now. And we have two, two uh, older guys in, in Scott, Scott Dixon and Ricky Robinson that are leading the charge as far as their reps and their knowledge that they're passing it off to the young guys. and. We're trying to rotate as many guys as we can to uh, get them fresh and familiar and be able to play in the fourth quarters, and I think it's, it's working so far. One of the big numbers of the Shepard team is that the offense scores 24 points. You guys have won like 95% of the ball games. While a lot of people may look at that as an offensive stat, that's got to be pride for you on the defensive side of the football, knowing that uh, you've done very well when your team's only put up a few scores. Yeah, it's uh, that's a great stat to know. I, now that I know it, um, so, I mean the big one of the big goals is to hold teams to 14 or less. And uh, you know I've been around Shepherd a long time, so I know back in 2006 we had six or seven shutouts in that season. And you know we've always prided ourselves since I was a, a player back in the 90s to to this day to limit guys to scores. And you know the guys are starting to get a, get a hold of that. And and uh, we've seen two two really good games out of the guys and uh, holding them you know, lower than, uh, to, you know, 24 points, 24 or low so far. Clarion on the schedule for Saturday. What do you see in them coming in offensively? They're explosive, you know, 48 points a game. And, uh, you know, they, they run the RPO stuff. They, they 277 yards a game rushing. Uh, they're, really, they're really getting after who they've played so far. And, uh, you know, it's going to be a challenge for us. It's more like the Mountain East now. Uh, this team is a little more spread out, what we're used to, uh, rather than the last two teams. So it's going to be familiar as far as formation and shifts and motions and things that we've seen before. Uh, so we're excited for the challenge, and it, uh, it'll be a little more spread out. So it's, uh, our guys are, have played a lot of ball games under that offense. 
Shepard defensive coordinator Josh Klein that's going to wrap up our Inside the Locker Room segment brought to you by Parsons Ford. They're on Shepardstown Road in Martinsburg or visit them online at ParsonsFordOfMartinsburg.com. They became number one by making you number one a first. We'll be back with more of the Brown Funeral Home pregame show next. This is Shepard Ram Football on TV10. With four new car dealerships and four used car dealerships in three states, Parsons is the largest used car and fastest growing new car dealer in the tri-state area. Take Parsons Ford with huge savings on hundreds of new Fords, financing from 0%, Parsons' goal of financing for all, and Parsons' famous above-market trade-in allowances that help make Parsons number one for used cars, too. See why so many won't buy anywhere but Parsons Ford in Martinsburg. We became number one by making you number one first. Parsons. Let's talk trash, because when it comes to trash, you have options. Panhandle Dumpsters is a local family-owned garbage hauling company serving both residential and commercial customers with weekly trash pickup, dumpster service, yard waste pickup, and ball pickups, too. Panhandle Dumpsters will give you a free trash can and provide curbside service for just $23 a month. Panhandle Dumpsters features a fleet of quieter, eco-friendly garbage trucks, thereby reducing the noise usually associated with pickup. Switch now and save up to 30%. Call 833-DUMP-STR, panhandledumpsters.com. They're my closest friends. We've been through a lot together. Seeing our kids off to college, Kelly losing her mom, my 50th birthday, I trust them with so much. So when it came to my finances, I trusted Kelly's referral to her Ameriprise advisor. Beth gives me the comprehensive advice that helps me feel confident my financial future is secure. With the right financial advisor, life can be brilliant. Ameriprise Financial. We welcome you back into the Brown Funeral Homes pregame show. We go between the hash marks during this segment as we talk with a Ram player. And today it is wide receiver Dylan Brewer, fresh off of a career game last week at Mercyhurst. As a senior, how good did that game feel? Um, it was just great, ultimately, to get the win. And I think that's really what we wanted when we were there. And we worked hard all week. And it's great to go out there and produce on the field on the weekend. Talk to us about an effort in which you get double digits in catches. Uh, how much of that was just a part of that game plan or how much of what Mercyhurst defense kind of gave? Um, it was just kind of you give them, you take what you can get, you know, and me and Tyson have worked for years and years together and, you know, we worked hard during practice during the week and coaches harped on things that would be open and we just followed the game plan and did what we could do. 11 different receivers catching a football in week one. In week two, nine different guys catching the football. What's that say about the depth of this wide receiving core? Um, we just been working hard ever since springtime. And, you know, coach has been talking about it. we got guys that can play a, the whole game. We got each one of us were deep at our, at our position. You know, that's just kind of what we want to do every week. We can give a different look. Anybody can go off at any time. And that's the luxury that we have here. And that means you've got to know every wide receiver position, right? Anybody can kind of be a slot, an outside receiver, do it all. Yeah, you always got to know what you're doing. Everybody's got to know what spot on the field. Uh, you got to run routes. You got, you got to know everything. That's the big thing. You know, you, you put people in different positions. You can make more plays and um, give a different look every week, which is great. While Tyson is throwing well and this passing game seems to be clicking, how important is it to uh, really get that ground game going to add to this offense? Um, I believe each week we can do really anything, and our coaches. Uh, I mean, we we we've, we've been just pressing at it, pressing at it week after week, and that's all you really can do. You know, just just follow the game plan, and it'll come to us. I, I really believe that, and we'll be fine. This week on the road, yet again, you're facing a Clarion team that is uh, two and zero for the first time since the 2015 season. They're going to be fired up. What do you see in those Golden Eagles? Um, they come out fast and they play really hard coming out in the first half. And you know, you just got to weather that storm. That's really all you can do. And stick with the game plan. And you know, I think at the end of the day, if we just keep sticking with that game plan, we'll come out on top. Dylan, thank you for your time. Good luck. Hey, thank you so much. Shepard Ram wide receiver Dylan Brewer joining us with our Between the Hash Marks segment. Stay tuned. We've got more of the Brown Funeral Homes pregame show coming up. It is Shepard Rams football on TV 10. For over 36 years, Green Tree Realty has been helping the Shepherdstown community find a place to call home. Our friendly team is ready to help you navigate the market and is your trusted resource complete with a wealth of experience and local knowledge. For those looking to buy land, commercial property, or a home, we'll help you find the perfect fit. From staging and negotiations to closing and beyond, we're with you every step of the way. 
If you have been injured in an auto accident or do someone's negligence and you want to know what your rights are, call Ferretti Law Office at 264-8505 to discuss your claim for free. Attorney Joe Ferretti is prepared to answer your questions and explain your options. Put Joe Ferretti's legal experience and history of proven results in your corner to fight the bullies from the insurance companies. At Ferretti Law Office, we're here to help you win. Hello, I'm Michael Falk, a lifelong resident of West Virginia, husband and father. I worked my way through school and life with honesty, hard work, and in athletics, education, farming, and aviation, and have carried me through years of fighting for a more accountable government at the local and state level. These same core principles will allow me to serve you well in Charleston. I believe true leadership is sticking your neck out for right, even when it goes against the establishment. You can help me put principle over politics and beat the odds one more time. We welcome you back in to Memorial Stadium in Clarion, Pennsylvania. We are high atop the press box looking down across the field as we get ready for today's Division II college football matchup. Clarion hosting your Shepherd Rams. This is the pregame show and brought to you by Brown Funeral Homes in Martinsburg, Inwood. Charlestown Ranson. Time for us to get in our keys to the game. They're brought to you by Green Tree Realty in Shepherdstown. Let Jackie Lewis hand you the keys to your next home. Phone 304 876 3737 or stop by the office at 138 East German Street in Shepherdstown. Matt, as we look at this matchup, let's start with the visitors from Shepherd. What do the Rams need to do? Keys for them today. The Shepherd Rams need to finish drives. They have done a very very good job of getting across midfield, but it seems like once they get into opponent's territory, and especially in between that 30 and 45 yard line, they hit quicksand. And that's the best analogy I can make for that. It really is just like quicksand. They go from moving the ball very well to just a sudden stop most of the time. Offensively, if the Rams score 24 points, they have won 95% of their football games over the course of program history. And since 1990, 93% of those football games, and they score 24 points. Uh, so that is the magic number for them. They have got to find a way to get to that 24-point mark. They have yet to do that this season, even in that 22-17 win. And yet it's an offense that is averaging 485 yards a game, but just 21 and a half points a game, as you're saying. The offense has been there as far as moving up and down the field. Today, they've got to finish. On that defensive side, they've got to be able to slow down a very good running game from Clarion. It's really a very good offense. I mean, you're talking about a team that's put up 45-plus points in both of their first games, or their first two games, rather. Uh, so Shepard's defense is going to have to do what they've done in the first two weeks. They don't need to change a thing. The formula they have to jam the run at the line of scrimmage, create a new line of scrimmage in the backfield is going to keep them in this football game and allow the offense to get back on the field very quickly. So for the defense, don't change what you've done. Stay consistent with what you've done weeks one and two. And I think Shepard's got a chance to really, I think, break this one open. I think this can be the game that Ram fans have been waiting for for the first two weeks. Well, the Ram defense giving up only about 39 rushing yards a game. They have given up only 77 total rushing yards through the first two games of the season. That Ram front seven will certainly be tested here today. Keys to the game for the Golden Eagles of Clarion. For Clarion, I think offensively, similar to what I just said, Shepard's got to continue to do what they've been doing in weeks one and two. Offensively for Clarion, nothing wrong with what they're doing. You see the point output. You see how well they're running. Let's talk trash, because when it comes to trash, you have options. Panhandle Dumpsters is a local family-owned garbage hauling company serving both residential and commercial customers with weekly trash pickup, dumpster service, yard waste pickup, and ball pickups, too. Panhandle Dumpsters will give you a free trash can and provide curbside service for just $23 a month. Panhandle Dumpsters features a fleet of quieter, eco-friendly garbage trucks, thereby reducing the noise usually associated.
gets out through the air. I think he has another good game today. Number one in the nation in passing yards total and, of course, a passing yard breakdown per game. Number two in the nation in completions per game. That's the numbers for Tyson Bajan, the Shepherd Ram quarterback. Our keys to the game brought to you by Green Tree Realty in Shepherdstown. Let Jackie Lewis hand you the keys to your next home. Find out more online at GreenTreeRealty.com. That wraps up our Browns Funeral Home pregame show. A look at the starting lineups and the opening kick coming up next. It's Shepherd Rams football on TV10. My name is Monica. I'm an elementary school teacher. My name is Mitch. I'm a graphic design specialist. We have four children. Currently we have life and auto insurance with Erie. Our agent is helping us to move our homeowners insurance to Erie as well. They've always been a good company and good customer service. If anything ever happens to me, my family will be protected. Your local Erie agent in Martinsburg is Smallwood and Small Insurance. Get a quote at smallwoodandsmall.com. Goes better with football than chicken. From Pee Wee to the Big Boys to the Wing T Formation, a hearty meal of 12 pieces for just $9 is just what the boys need to be at their best. Oh my, fumbling, bumbling, stumbling. Omaha! <laughs> Rocks 12 pieces of chicken, just $9. Back again at Memorial Stadium where the Shepherd Rams have just won the coin toss. They have deferred and will put their defense out on the field first. A look at that defense as we get into the starting lineups brought to you by Panhandle Dumpsters, giving Berkeley County residents options. Get a free garbage can and service for only $23 a month. Local, family-owned. To learn more at PanhandleDumpsters.com or phone 1-833-DUMP-STR. Well, let's begin with the defense for Shepard. At the end positions will be David Wilson along with Ricky Robinson. Nasheed Bridgman will be the nose tackle. The linebackers will be Kyle Smith. Uh, Jared Austin listed on this too deep but will not play today. We understand due to injury suffered last week. Corey Shell likely in that starting spot. Chris Lane and David Eppert also at the linebacker position. Chris Jones and Donnell Howard are the corners. Antonio Fox on our two deep but again will not be able to play the first half as he was called with a targeting penalty in the second half last week. It'll be uh, Tim Womack back there along with Michael Blackman Herbert. Offensively for Clarion, Joe McAvoy and Andrew Venata are the tackles. Jake Lindner and Nate Armacost are the guards. Jack Blevins is the center. Jeff Clemens should be the starting quarterback with Mylake McGriff in the backfield as a tailback. Maverick Kelsey is a fullback. The tight end, Jacob White Knight and wideouts, Khalik Muhammad and Terrell Ford. That is a look at today's probable starting lineups and brought to you by Panhandle Dumpsters. Now you talk about Jared Austin, what a freak injury. Ended up pulling his hamstring a little bit and kind of cushioning the fall. Ended up breaking his thumb going to the ground. So just a random fluke injury that went from what could have been a, a week to week or even day to day type of injury to he's going to miss some substantial time with that broken thumb. Hayden August Scriven to kick off for the Rams. Shepard on that far sideline in the all-whites today. Pants and jersey tops, the dark blue numerals with that gold trim and the traditional Ram football helmet with the gold horns wrapping around the earpiece. Meanwhile, Clarion in the dark blue jersey tops, white pants with the white numerals and gold trim. August Scriven had the ball come off the tee, so he resets it and now approaches. 
And this football game is underway. High but short end over end kick. Taking it in the middle of the field at about the six and making his way to the near side is the return man getting outside the numbers to the 20. And the 25 yard line spun around after going out of bounds there. And on that return, Terrell Ford, the 6 1 sophomore wide receiver. So a nice return. A nice day for football, Matt. Maybe even a little warm. Yeah, a little warm for this time of year, especially when you get up into this part of Pennsylvania. The breeze has been off and on, but uh, when it has come, it's going across the field, so not sure it's going to impact the kicking game one way or another when it comes to field goal or battling for field position on punts. Jeff Clemens is the starting quarterback, and joining him in the backfield, the tailback, Malik McGriff. The handoff on the first play going to McGriff, looking for some running room to the left side, and there is none. Stepping in to help shut that one down almost immediately, Corey Shell, who's getting that start with the injury to Austin. Yeah, Clemens and McGriff working a little bit of a read option play right there, and a good job by Shepard's defense. We saw them get better at this against Mercyhurst last week, filling those cutback lanes when you have the read option. Cutback lanes are everything for that quarterback, and that is reading whether he can go right at the middle of the field. And if not, he's forced to give it to that running back who's going to try to bounce it outside, and nothing there either. Good job by the Shepherd exterior lineman. On second and 11, the quarterback back to throw deep along the near side and intercepted, picked off at the midfield stripe for the Rams on the return is Donnell Howard. Howard moving towards that far side, gets back to the clearing in 45, and Shepard will have it after the first turnover for this defense this season. And that is a long time coming. That is something we talked to off mic uh, with Josh Klein a little bit at practice on Thursday, and very rare for the Shepard Ram defense not to have a turnover through two weeks. A big one there, and it looked like wide receiver Dana Jackson uh, had a good seam right there. It looked like he slowed up a little bit and was expecting Clemens to uh, kind of drop it into him. I think Clemens was expecting uh, Jackson to go a little bit further, and that caused that turnover. On first down for the Rams, handoff to Deontay Glover, straight ahead running, and a nice job for that offensive front line, blowing that hole open. And the stop will come at the 37 after a pickup of just about eight. Let's give you that Ram offensive front, Eric Ostro and Joey Fisher, the tackles, Keandre Batson and Cole Weaver, the guards, and Evan Ostro, the starting center. From the 37 after that pickup of eight on a second down and short pass in the flat on that far side. Trying to get it to the tight end, if you will, DJ Cornish. He'll line up at slot. He'll line up at tight end. They move him around a lot. The pass incomplete. Yeah, he'll line up just about anywhere. And when he catches the football, that was going to be a one-on-one -on -one with him and that outside linebacker coming over. And I'm taking DJ Cornish in that battle every day of the week. Such a unit of a body. Just got to watch that one all the way into the chest. Pistol formation on a third and short, and the handoff going to the tailback, looking for running room off the left side of the line, and Deontay Glover will be stopped after a gain of one yard. They'll mark it out to the 38, and it'll be fourth and short, and let's see what the Rams do. you got to go for it here, and it looks like that's what Coach McCook's going to do. You get that early turnover, you got to capitalize. you got to get a first down here. Again, this is the quicksand part of the field. You saw a good a first down run getting them inside that 45-yard line. We talked about it in the pregame show. This is where the offense slows down. Got to get this first down here. Uh, and a costly penalty here. False start. Yep, you can see it. The line moved before the snap of the football. And now the punting unit will come on as the Rams commit their first penalty. And that has been something else that uh, through the first couple of weeks we talked to head coach Ernie McCook about was penalties, and not just penalties, but untimely penalties. It seems like when uh, the Rams are getting penalized, it is on a third and short or in a big situation where they truly can't afford it, and that's not a good way uh, for the offense to start after the defense gave them phenomenal field position. Noah Pohl into punt has put out five inside the 20. He'll try to do it again, that end-over-end -end punt as he punts the point of the football and the fair catch made right around the seven-yard line by Khalik Muhammad. And that punt will cover roughly 35 yards and another nice job by Noah Pohl to put that football not only inside the 20 but inside the 10. From the seven-yard line, second offensive possession coming for the Golden Eagles of Clarion. First possession resulting in an INT, but that Ram offense could not take advantage of the great field position. See if the defense can make another big play. A single receiver out to the left, three here to the wide side right. 
Quarterback again is Clemens out of the gun. He hands it off straight up the middle and quickly into that secondary goes the running back and leaping into the air. And then being taken down is Malik McGriff. McGriff going to get all the way out to the 25-yard line. That's a gain of 18. Yeah, Chris Lane standing almost straight up. And you see McGriff trying to go over the top. And uh, Chris Lane just got a head full of human. On a first down and 10, Clemens out of the gun. Taking that snap again, hands it off, coming near side. That's McGriff. He's got some shifty moves. Again, going to pick up about 10 yards before being taken down on the play by Hassan Marshall. And I hate to pick on Chris Lane back-to-back -back plays, but you see McGriff with the, a little shake-and-bake type move, just the stutter step right there in the hole. Chris Lane went one way, and just you saw that right foot kind of slip and uh, fully extend out, just couldn't stay balanced right there, allowing a first down. Running a little hurry-up offense, if you will, getting to that football, controlling the tempo. Clemens taking the shotgun snap, gave a little look, and it is a designed run for the quarterback, and straight ahead, he'll move out to the 40-yard line for a short pickup. That looks to be 5'8", Scott Dixon, the senior defensive lineman, able to make the tackle after a five-yard pickup. Right now on this drive, it is Clarion doing everything they want to on the ground. Front seven going to have to dig down a little deeper here two receivers going each way Clemens this season 18 of 28 passing 155 yards three touchdowns one pick they've used two quarterbacks and haven't thrown a lot here is a pass in the flat to the back out of the backfield and that is McGriff getting to the near sideline and knocked out of bounds let's see where they're going to spot it looks like right on the 45 and that gain is going to be good for five and another first down yeah, Son Marshall coming over, doing a good job of laying out completely and sacrificing the body just to make sure the runner was stopped right there. But like you said, just not enough to keep him to move in the chains. Three first downs now in this possession. That started at their own seven-yard line. Fifth play of the drive coming up. Offset eye backfield behind the quarterback as this time Clemens goes under center. Hands it off to McGriff. Met in the hole. Cannot escape from the Ram defensive lineman as Nasheed Bridgman is able to bring him down. Big nose tackle right there. Bridgman, that's what you need to do in the middle. Make clear and realize you are not going up the middle on us. You're going to have to find another way on the outside. And Shepard's got speed at the linebacking core. So a tough task, which is why teams have struggled so much running against them this year. Second and 11 now from their own 44 with the ball on the near side hash mark. No score, 10-30 on a running first quarter clock. Back to each side of the quarterback. Clemens taking that snap, handing it off, turning the corner on that far side. This time on the carry, that's a 2-2, and that is Scott Florence. Scott he is a 5'8", a red shirt senior. He gets into Ram territory, down to the 47-yard line, and that gain is good for just about eight. Looking at Scott Florence's numbers on the year, only 12 yards netted so far, so he just almost doubled that on that run. Yeah, give him nine on that carry. It brings up a third down and two. The Rams stacking the box. They look like they're coming. The handoff going to the fullback. He steps over the top of Chris Lane. Falling forward has the first down. Ross Grease, a six-foot red shirt freshman with that carry. The fullback listed at 205 pounds. That gain down to the 43, so a pickup of four yards and the fourth first down in this possession. Eighth play of the drive coming. And you wonder how much this hurry-up offense is messing with Shepard. Right now, Clarion doing a very good job of getting to the line quickly and not allowing Shepard to make too many adjustments. Offset eye backfield again with a handoff going to the deep man and the tail back over his left McGriff guard and tackle. We'll get maybe two at best as McGriff quickly taken down. Looks like the linebacker, the last one off the bottom of the pile. That's Kyle Smith, the junior for the Rams with the stop. Yeah, Son Marshall also went on that one as well. So second and eight from that Ram 41. Shepard needs to get off the field here. A lengthy drive for Clary, and this started with 12.46 to play in our opening quarter. We're now under nine minutes on that running clock. On second down and eight, Clemens wants to throw along the near side, leaping into the air and pulling that one in is Terrell Ford. Ford along the near side, hash mark, moves that one down to about the 33-yard line. That game's going to be good for just about eight, and that's a first. Yeah, Donnell Howard playing corner right there and just giving a little too much cushion, making an easy slant opportunity. A high throw by Clemens, but good job able to come down with it for a first down. 
So from that Ram 33, 10th play of the possession, first down and 10. Now five first downs in this drive. Clemens out of the gun, taking that snap, handing it off. That's McGriff off the left side of the line quickly. Got into that line back in four. Wrapping him up and bringing him down again is Hassan Marshall. Boy, we've seen him in on a lot of plays. That one goes down to the 27, so a pickup of six. And Malik McGriff doing a good job of absorbing that first contact and making Shepard rally to the football. He's not necessarily running guys over, but at least staying upright and moving that pile just a few extra yards on each run. Second down and four coming for Clarion. Ball on that far side. Hash mark as they move from left to right. Three receivers here to the wide side right. I believe that's McGriff back out there at tailback. Man coming in motion from right to left. They will fake the give to him, and the quarterback Clemens goes down very quickly. Good read by the Rams as they fake the give on the jet sweep to Dana Jackson, and the quarterback is tackled at the 30 for a loss of three. Yeah, the offensive line right there for Claire on the entire left side, and really even into the interior lineman on both sides, just getting blown up immediately off the football. Third down and seven now from that Ram 30-yard line. A big third down. Might be third and fourth down territory for this Clarion offense where they're at now. Three receivers again here to the near side. A single receiver to that far side. Jeff Clemens, the redshirt senior quarterback, taking that shotgun snap. Dumps it off in the flat on that far side. Grab is made, and it looks like a first down. It is as McGriff out of the backfield in the flat to the left. Angled to the sideline, got taken down at the 22, but that's an eight-yard gain and yet another first down, the sixth of the possession. Yeah, and that was a block and release by McGriff, which is why he was so open on that left side. Coming in late was what looked like Hassan Marshall. And again, just kind of reading that McGriff was blocking, just not quick enough to get there on the release. And right now, Clarion moving the ball at will on this Shepherd Ram defense. First and 10 from the Ram, 22. In the backfield, the handoff going to the tailback, looking for room to the near side. McGriff finds a little cutback lane, diving forward. We'll get back to the line of scrimmage and nothing more. Nice job by that Ram defense stringing out that play. David Wilson, a defensive lineman right there to help push it more towards the sideline. And looking at Malik McGriff's numbers on the year, coming in, 44 rushes, 299 yards on the season, so a well over 300 now, but had to think about 300 yards basically on a 22 carries a game. You look at that a 6.8 per attempt, and it makes a whole lot of sense why they're going to him early, although not in the game right now, it looks like. I believe that's 22. Scott Florence now in the backfield. Florence will be a blocker as the pass goes far side. That is a long throw to that far side of the field where the grab is made by Khalik Muhammad. Muhammad getting to the sideline, forced out of bounds. It looks like at the 12-yard line, that's a 10-yard gain and another first down. And we talked about Donnell Jones giving a lot of cushion back on a play earlier this drive on the near side of the field, giving a lot of cushion there. That is a, a throw from the a near hash mark to the far side of the field. Uh, that is interception written all over in most cases. First and 10 from the 12, handoff to the tailback and a gain of maybe one. That is Florence who remained out there. And Scott Florence, the redshirt senior, gains a yard. From the 11 of the Rams on a second and nine. Matt, this will be the 16th play of this possession. Under five minutes now here in quarter number one. Both teams trying to run the football early. This clock is just ticking away and so far other than one penalty for Shepard, a relatively clean first quarter. Clemens out from under center with an eye backfield behind him. Hands it off to Florence. He gets an opening inside the five-yard line. Pulls his way forward, but will be stopped short of the goal line. Touchdown saving tackle. The Rams, Michael Herbert Blackman in on that one. And it looks like it would be uh, number eight, I believe, in on that stop as well. Could not get the number. Yeah, Blackman Herbert uh, coming in and saving a touchdown right there. I believe that would be Chikozi Anaquere who helped to make that stop. But that was a gain of, well, about nine down to the one. And on a goal line situation, the football is free. It is loose. And let's see. I think they're going to they call him down, down the one yard line because that ball is advanced on a fumble. Yeah, Clemens able to get on that loose football. Oh, now they are going to call it a touchdown. So Clemens able to recover that fumble as Ross Grease, the fullback, 
got met right at the line and lost that football, but it ended up right across the goal line where it was recovered by the quarterback, and it's a touchdown for Jeff Clemens. Well, that was a fantastic drive by Clarion, and I'm not sure I want to be in that huddle with defensive coordinator Josh Klein when the defense comes off the field. They were abused on the ground that last drive. James Metzger for the extra point, snap placement kick. It is up and Metzger it is good. Up. Metzger now 13 good. of 15 in PATs on the season. Now let's take a break. Four minutes and one second remaining in quarter number one with Clarion leading Shepard, seven, nothing. Hello, I'm Michael Falk, a lifelong resident of West Virginia, husband and father. I worked my way through school and life with honesty, hard work and determination. These principles have served me well in athletics, education, farming and aviation and have carried me through years of fighting for a more accountable government at the local and state level. These same core principles will allow me to serve you well in Charleston. I believe true leadership is sticking your neck out for right even when it goes against the establishment. You can help me put principle over politics and beat the odds one more time. They're my closest friends. We've been through a lot together. Seeing our kids off to college, Kelly losing her mom, my 50th birthday, I trust them with so much. So when it came to my finances, I trusted Kelly's referral to her Ameriprise advisor. Beth gives me the comprehensive advice that helps me feel confident my financial future is secure. With the right financial advisor, life can be brilliant. Ameriprise Financial. Back again here at Memorial Stadium. We'll give you the drive a summary in just a moment. It is brought to you by Mike Folk for Governor, the former Ram. Find out more at Folk, the number four, WB.com. Looks like Metzger, who has that football on the tee at the 35 yard left. He approaches, slips as he gets that kick away. It's a bouncer taken at the 28 yard line, and the Ram return man. Has his legs taken out from underneath of him across the 35 on that return for Shepard is Matt Betterelli listed as a redshirt freshman tight end and fullback. Hey, that drive for Clarion, 17 plays, 93 yards, 8 minutes and 45 seconds. Grease fumbling at the 1, but recovered in the end zone by the quarterback Jeff Clemens for the score. So from their own 39, Ram football second possession of the game. Out of the gun, Bajan. Handing that one off. No, he faked that handoff. Finds an open Dylan Brewer at the 40 down the far side. Hash mark Dylan Brewer going to race into the end zone for the Shepherd University Ram touchdown. A little run pass Dylan option, and it was a great play action pass as Bajan hit Brewer, and the score covers 61 yards. Dylan Brewer finally getting in the end zone. Much deserved. He's had a whale of a season so far. Again, congratulations to him on finally getting in the end zone this year. And you talk about a great read option by Tyson Bajan. That looked like a run all the way, but also Dylan Brewer on the outside slowing down, making it look like he was going to block before hitting on the Jets and being wide open and running that one all the way in for a touchdown. Great play. That's just what Shepard needed to come back, a quick score. And now Hayden August to Scriven called on for the extra point. Five of six in that category this season. Snap and placement, and that PAT is blocked. Oh ah, boy, Clarion's going to hang on to a one point lead. We will take another break with 3.49 to play here in quarter number one with your score Clarion at seven and Shepard six. Hi, this is Eric from Hagerstown Ford. I keep telling you that Hagerstown Ford has completely changed the car buying experience forever. And with a return policy easier than Walmart, Hagerstown Ford has a goal to deliver 350 cars and trucks per month. And when I say deliver, I mean deliver to you, where you are, just like Amazon does. And if you don't want it, return it. No questions asked. The only way Hagerstown Ford can accomplish this extremely aggressive goal is to make the car buying process fast and easy. We simply refuse to play the dumb back and forth games that most dealerships want to play. There's absolutely no reason for you to waste your precious time at a car dealership. I assure you, there is no dealership from Winchester, Virginia to Washington, D.C. that can beat our price. There's no dealership that will allow you to return your new car if you don't want it. Hagerstown Ford absolutely has the best price and we'll bring the car to you. And if you don't want it, return it, period. No questions asked. There's no reason to buy anywhere else. Visit HagerstownFord.com to schedule your VIP experience and get your new ride delivered to you. Contact dealer for details. 
Uh, the Shepherd Ram a scoring drive, well, not really a drive at all. One play, 61 yards, took only 10 seconds. Tyson Bajan with his sixth touchdown pass of the season, and Dylan Brewer, his first touchdown rece reception, pardon me, extra point for Hayden August Scriven was blocked, and it's a one-point clearing and lead. August Scriven approaches, gets away the kick, high end over end kick. Return man going to take it right at the one-yard line, up the near sideline to the 10 and the 15, out to the 20, hits, spins, taken down at the 25 on the return. Terrell Ford, the Ford sophomore the wide receiver. Well, let's see if that Ram defense has made some adjustments. The last time that Clarion had the football, they put together a 93-yard drive in 8 minutes and 45 seconds. And the bad news for Shepard's defense, not a whole lot of rest time. A quick score just taking 10 seconds off the clock with Shepard's offense. So you love the score, getting within one. You would like to come in in a tie ball game with that extra point being blocked. But not a whole lot of time to rest, not a whole lot of time for Josh Klein to try to adjust things. Change at quarterback. We knew it was coming. Instead of the three on the jersey of Jeff Clemens, that's a 10, and that's Michael Proyos. He's a redshirt freshman, 6'1", 180, taking over at quarterback. He'll take that snap, sling it out near side. Ford with the catch immediately hit and taken down. Nice play by the Rams' Chris Jones as the defensive back makes that stop. Penalty marker down right in the middle of the field where we could get a hold. Holder possible lining up in the neutral zone where that one's thrown. Yeah, but I, I'm not sure. I thought it was maybe the umpire that threw that one from behind the defense. It was something that he saw in that offensive line. Nah, and they're going to walk it back. Up block. Oh, up there block. you go. Number 55 and number so let's both be wrong. Half the so the illegal block, and that's a loss that will move the football all the way back down to the 12-yard line. So roughly 13 yards on that one. First penalty for Clarion. And now it uh, gives them first and long. Yeah, 22. And Matt, you talk about Progos and a quarterback right now. Better numbers than Jeff Clements so far on the season. 13 for 23, 229 yards, four touchdowns thrown to just one interception. Proyos looking to throw, now going to run with the football. The middle of the field is wide open. He's out across the 25 and the 30-yard line, and Chris Lane, the linebacker, eventually getting him from behind. The stop comes out at the 31. Great block upfield by number 25, running back Ross Grease. Did a very good job upfield to create that hole for Proyos to get that extra yardage. Second down and four. Second and roughly four yards to go for a first after a gain of about 18 on that one for Proyos. Looking at his rushing numbers, nine carries, 48 yards, and a long of 14 coming in. He's got a new long now. From the 31 in Golden Eagle territory, 235 on a running first quarter clock, 7-6, the lead for the Golden Eagles. Penalty marker down, an illegal procedure at the snap of the football. It looked like too many men in motion. Offense, number 67. So now they're just going to get that as a straight false start. It looked like there was uh, the running back and the blocking back coming in motion at the same time. Thought that's what the penalty was going to be on. Going to be on the right guard for a false start. Makes it second down and about nine for a first. That's two penalties, 18 yards, both coming in this possession. And now's when the Ram defense has to get off the field. You've got a 15-yard or 13-yard penalty, half the distance to the goal on the illegal block, and now a procedure penalty. The Shepard defense has to make a stand here and get off the field. Second down and about nine. Play action pass. Wide open receiver over the middle. Grab is made by Quinn Zenoble. He's a freshman, 6'3", 195, and he gets it out to the 48-yard line for a first down. It looked like zone defense being played by the Shepherd Rams and David Effort playing this side linebacker in that uh, front zone. I don't know if there was a blitz called or not, but that linebacking core playing up the safeties, playing very far back in the zone, so he left that middle of the field wide open. So first down and 10 now from their own 48. There is the pass and going down to the ground to make that grab at the Ram 45-yard line is said McNair. That is a 16. From my vantage point, couldn't tell whether it was a 6 or a 5. So uh, that is a 6, Isaiah 16, pardon me, Isaiah McNair with that catch. He'll pick up just about 7 yards. 115 and counting on this first quarter clock. Clarion over midfield. 
for the second straight drive in Shepherd Ram territory. They hold the one-point lead 7-6 as we're now at a minute and five on a running first quarter clock. Hand off to the tailback. That is Florence on this carry. He is going to get uh, down to the 41-yard line. And my apologies, that's a 3-3, not a 2-2. So that is Malik McGriff, the junior tailback on that carry. Picked up four yards, another first down. I've got nine first downs unofficially in this opening quarter for this Clarion offense. And McGriff, again, he's not necessarily running over guys. What he's doing is forcing uh, the Shepard defense to get multiple helmets on the football, not going down with the first guy that hits him. He is staying on his feet, getting a few extra yards, and that time it was good enough for a first down. Proyos out of the gun, throwing deep along that far side, and a diving grab made at the 11. Penalty markers come flying in. Hang on. They do rule the pass in complete, but now we're going to get a penalty as the back judge threw that flag from in behind the play. Uh, the deep official on that far side watching the play did not throw a flag, but the back judge did. And let's see what we'll have. It looks like it could pass be. Defense number eight. Yep, penalty. pass interference on Chagosi on Aquare. And on Aquare did turn around to look at the ball, but I think it was just a, a split second too late as the receiver had already began to make the adjustment to go get the football. That's 15 yards on the pass the interference, ball, Shepherd, two penalties, 20 yard yards line, for the Shepherd Rams, and the ball gets down to that Ram 26-yard line where it is first down and 10. 26 seconds left in our opening quarter and a 7-6 lead for Clarion. And as a concern, you get that last drive, it was all on the ground, and this drive so far, Clarion doing a very good job through the air. Yeah, a couple of pass completions, and now that pass interference penalty. Up under center this time, the quarterback, Aproyos, takes that snap and on the play action, rolling near side, dumps it off. He's got his fullback along the near sideline, goes out of bounds. Let's see the market at about the 15. Penalty markers There's come flying in at the play. end of the play as well. Let's check that. Mark the play down to the 16-yard line. That would be a gain of 10. See where they're going to mark it from. Looks like it might be a holding penalty. Yeah, Quinn's a noble in the area of that penalty, blocking the back. It will be marked from the spot of the foul, blocking the back on which looks like it will be marked from the 17. So they'll move it back to about the 27-yard line. He has a noble in the wide open field right there and right around where the, the play is being made. So if you're going to commit a block in the back penalty not the ideal place to do it with all eyes on you so with the illegal block that is now three penalties for 28 yards on clarion and that will be the final play of quarter number one as the clock has just struck zeros back with your second quarter of action from here at memorial stadium in clarion pennsylvania with clarion leading shepherd seven six Let's talk trash, because when it comes to trash, you have options. Panhandle Dumpsters is a local family-owned garbage hauling company serving both residential and commercial customers with weekly trash pickup, dumpster service, yard waste pickup, and ball pickups, too. Panhandle Dumpsters will give you a free trash can and provide curbside service for just $23 a month. Panhandle Dumpsters features a fleet of quieter, eco-friendly garbage trucks, thereby reducing the noise usually associated with pickup. Switch now and save up to 30%. Call 833-DUMP-STR, panhandledumpsters.com. If you have been injured in an auto accident or due to someone's negligence and you want to know what your rights are, call Ferretti Law Office at 264-8505 to discuss your claim for free. Attorney Joe Ferretti is prepared to answer your questions and explain your options. Put Joe Ferretti's legal experience and history of proven results in your corner to fight the bullies from the insurance companies. At Ferretti Law Office, we're here to help you win. Along with Matt Crawford, I'm Matt Miller. Caleb Falero is at the studio. Eric Sterick and John Alderton running cameras and our TV10 on-site producers as we bring you Ram of football, quarter number one in the books. And time of possession, number of plays dominated by Clarion. A 17-play drive, put it all together, and they have run, let's see, 19, add five more to it, 24 plays, while the Rams have run just four offensive plays so 
far today. Yeah, but one going for a long touchdown, so can't complain about effectiveness. Football's at the Ram 27. Now Clarion moving from right to left, and they face a first and 11 after that last penalty got marked off at the and end Matt, of the quarter. How about that first quarter taking just 29 minutes of real time? Hey, hey knock on moving. some wood I'm not, I'm not saying it's a good thing or bad thing, just saying a relatively quickly moving first quarter. Both teams trying to run the football. Empty backfield for Proyos as he'll send five receivers out into the pattern and the Rams put on a ton of pressure. Scott Dixon getting in quickly as Proyos rolling to his right through incomplete out of bounds. And a good job by the secondary playing tight coverage right there. Proyos immediately having to roll to his right. If there is any soft coverage there, any a cushion being given by the secondary, those were all short routes being run. And look at a little trickery right here. It looks like there's a lineman out as a slot receiver right now on this near side, right at that near hash mark at about the 33, make that the 27-yard line. Well, the screen pass goes to that far side. The catch is made, and the wide receiver slipping a couple of tackles, and Isaiah McNair, who had a catch near the end of that first quarter, able to get inside the 25 down to the 24. That gain is good for three. will bring up a third and eight. Maybe trying to draw the defense to this side, assuming that if you got a, a lineman out there that far, that ball's going to come to the near side. Shepard doing a good job of staying home and playing where they needed to play on that a defensive call. Eighth play of this possession. Third and eight coming in Clarion. Two for two on third downs unofficially in that opening quarter. On third down, a back to the left of the quarterback. Proyos taking that shotgun snap. Play action pass and almost intercepted along the near side hash mark. It went in and out of the hands of a Ram defensive back. Almost getting that one was Terrell Lindsay, a sophomore DB. Got to come up with that one. I think that was a case where he was thinking, I think he was trying to stay on his feet so he could move up the field and then drop him to his knees. But either way, it's going to be a field goal attempt here. Not a chip shot at all. So it looks like 6-1 coming in. That is James Metzger for what will be a 42-yard field goal attempt from that far side hash mark. Plenty of leg on that one. And the accuracy is there as well as Metzger puts it up and through. He was 0 for 1, having missed a 46-yard field goal earlier in the season. Gets his first one here. And we'll take a break with 14.09 to play in the half. And Clarion now leading Shepard 10-6. For over 36 years, Green Tree Realty has been helping the Shepherdstown community find a place to call home. Our friendly team is ready to help you navigate the market and is your trusted resource complete with a wealth of experience and local knowledge. For those looking to buy land, commercial property, or a home, we'll help you find the perfect fit. From staging and negotiations to closing and beyond, we're with you every step of the way. to the grown-ups. Your car is now your office. Stage. Nursery. Shh. Sorry. Insuring it shouldn't be a headache. Erie, number one in the nation for highest satisfaction with the auto insurance purchase experience six years in a row. And with Erie, you get your own independent agent. Not a giant corporate call center or some online robot. You meet with a real person like this. Your local Erie agent in Martinsburg is Smallwood and Small Insurance. Get a quote at smallwoodandsmall.com. Erie Insurance. Metzger approaching the ensuing kickoff after that Clarion field goal. High and short, taken along the near side at the 11 by Brown. Brown to the 20 yard line. Slows down, lets his blocking set, bounces a little further to his left, out beyond the 25, turns the corner to the 30-yard line, and eventually pushed out there. Ronnie Brown, a freshman Brown running back, who last week came in and got a couple of carries out of the backfield late in the game, showing his speed, able to turn that corner on special teams. That drive summary, by the way, for Clarion. Nine plays, 51 yards in four minutes and 34 seconds. 42 yards, that field goal up and good for James Metzger. Drive summary. Summary brought to you by Mike Folk for Governor, accountable, ethical, responsible. Find out more at folk4wv.com. So 13.57 to play here in our first half. 35-yard line. The Rams in their own territory first and 10. And hold on. A quick officials get together. This was time off. We have determined that the ball was spotted incorrectly. The ball spotted at the 32-yard line. First down. 
So the ball will be put back to the 32-yard line and not the 35-yard line. And the Rams will start there. Looks like Deontay Glover to the left side of the quarterback, Tyson Bajan, leading the nation in passing yards through the first two games. Dumps it in the flat to Glover on that left side. He's across the 40, lowers the head and shoulders, fights through a tackle across the 45. Mark his progress out to about the 47. And I think that's what Deontay Glover needs, uh, whether it's getting the ball out of the backfield and moving quickly out of the backfield as there's a injured Golden Eagle on the far side. A 20-something on the number looked like a 28. Yeah, I believe that was a yeah, two-way. Darren which would Ward be, Jr., the yeah. defensive back, the soft, the redshirt sophomore from Camden, New Jersey, looks injured on that far side. A little warm out here today, so hopefully just a cramp. But going back to the running backs, I think both Glover and Hebron, whether it's those quick passes out, the quick swing passes out of the backfield like you just saw, or running the football, I think they just need to get touches and move in the right direction to really get that running game going. Yeah, the injured player, they are tending to his lower right leg. I'm not sure as much a cramp as it was uh, him lowering the head and shoulders. And when he took that hit from Glover, I think that leg kind of locked into the turf along that far sideline. He is limping his way across the field right now, fully under his own power, but walking very gingerly. First and 10 coming for Shepard from their own 47, trailing by a 10 to 6 score, 13.50 to play in our first half on a beautiful, sunny, but uh, kind of warm afternoon here in Pennsylvania. Temperature about 82 degrees. Single receiver out to that far side, three receivers to the near side for Tyson Bajan, who again will have Deontay Glover to his right side. How about the touch on that pass from Bajan to Glover as well, floating it out there on that last play to pick up 15. On first down, Bajan looking over that defense. On the play action, throws near side. Dylan Brewer the grab. He gets outside the numbers to the 40-yard line, hit from behind and taken down at the 39. Wow, they're going to actually mark it. It looks like right at the 40 of Clary, and that gained good for 13 yards. And you're now talking about 89 passing yards on three of four for Tyson Bajan. Yeah, and Greg Leonard along with... Dylan Brewer both running slants, and I think this both a corners in coverage right there assumed they were going to go all the way across the field. Dylan Brewer threw the brakes on and then was able to spin back to the short side of the field, giving him that first down. I give him 14 as they do set it down at the 39, and Bajan throwing far side. A lot of contact as Dylan Brewer was man up out there with a the defensive back. The pass overthrown and incomplete, and I think it was overthrown because of the contact. That looks to be a 2-6. And it's Cameron Sutherland, a senior defensive back, who was on Further that coverage. Back, holding defense number 26. 10-yard penalty, automatic, first down. So there it is, the holding penalty going against Sutherland. And looking back, I've got four penalties, 38 yards now in this first half, whistled against Clarion. And that's a first down now for the Rams as the football gets moved down to the Clarion 29-yard line. And despite how this first half has played out so far, the Rams are a touchdown away from taking the lead. Yeah. See if the offense can punch this one in. First and 10 from that Golden Eagle 29. Ball on the near side, hash mark. Two receivers out to the wide side left. There is the snap receiver screen. Catch is made. That is Greg Leonard. Leonard may have lost the ball at the end of the play, but I think he was down at the 25. There's also a penalty marker on the play. I think we may end up with a hold out there on a Ram receiver. And yeah, Clarion begging was a fumble on the that Leonard. No fumble on the play. The yeah, begging that Leonard got rid of the ball or lost the ball before he get, hit the ground, but, but no dice on that with the officiating crew today. So Greg Leonard going to pick up a couple. Completed catch. Holding. Offense number one. Seven yard penalty. Replay first down. Devin Phelps is called with the hold. It came. We'll see where they're going to spot that. I thought they ruled that it came from the 26 yard line. They look like they're marking it all the way back from the line of scrimmage. That shouldn't be the case. Wow, it is. So minus 10 on the hold, it becomes a first down and 20 back at the 39-yard line. 
Bajan out of the gun, looking to throw, dumps it off in the flat on the near side. That's Ty Hebron immediately hit and goes down at the 45-yard line, Chris minus Gilday six yards. On the stop for your Golden Eagles. Uh, I was play. able to get it in the flat to Hebron, but that play snuffed out by the defense. And Chris Gilday uh, getting in there to make that stop. It'll bring up now a second down and very long back at the 44-yard line of Clarion. The Rams going in the wrong direction. Second and roughly 25. Out of the gun, Bajan taking that shotgun snap. Looking near side, fires and the catch made. Getting to the sideline, Michael Freeman. Freeman, Freeman going to be spotted. It looks Shepard. like at the... 41 and so a gain wow of only three yards and it's going to bring up third and about 22 and once again a costly penalty leading to the Rams going in the wrong direction third and long now the Rams 0 for 1 missing on a third and two on their very opening possession from the Clarion 41 on a third and 22 Looks like pressure could be coming. Four down linemen, a linebacker up there as well. The linebacker drops back into coverage. Bajan with a little pump fake gets it to Hebron on that far side. Hebron stays in bounds to the 20. Let's see where they're going to mark him out of bounds. They'll spot him right on the 20 yard line. He picks up 21 yards, but needed Hebron 22. On Takes it close to the lead stick. Well, now we will wait and see what head coach Ernie McCook and down. offensive coordinator Ty Hyatt come up with. I don't think this should be much of a discussion. You got to go for it here. Get that power pistol, and it looks like McCook's coming in at fullback, and it looks like they're going to bring in a second and or third tight end. Fourth and one. Slash fullback. I know that's going to be a slot receiver, so a power pistol now, and DJ Cornish on that far side of tight end. You got to get that first down here. Ty Hebron in that pistol formation in behind Bajan who awaits that snap. It is back. He's got it. Hand off Hebron. Met at the line of scrimmage. He pushed his way forward. And let's see. The official on the far side. The yeah, official on the near the side. Team both going to spot it at the 20-yard line. The, uh, the Ram offensive and line did not get any game. surge at all. And Shepard turns Henry it over on downs. Down. And this is exactly what we have seen through the first couple of games for this Ram offense, putting up some yardage, moving the football, but drives stalling. Yeah, there's that quicksand again like I talked about in the pregame. And it is like clockwork. It's once they get inside that 35-yard line. So get inside, really, the scoring range or field goal range. It's when they just hit a wall. And you see it right there, the offensive line just not getting any push. And again, I know that this offense runs through the shotgun formation. But I still struggle with going out of the shotgun and running on a fourth and one. Uh, to me, that's got to be an under center play that you have a small package with, and you're not taking the ball seven yards behind the line of scrimmage to gain one yard. Looks like Proyos back out there at quarterback for Clarion. Now first and ten from their own 20. Handoff going to the tailback, looking for running room to the right. Runs into Chris Lane, who will make that tackle after a pickup of two on that carry. Again, their leading rusher, Malik McGriff. Given three out to that 23-yard line. It'll bring up a second down and seven. This Ram defense really needs a stop, a chance to get off. The Rams defense does come up with that big play. And that's a great battle back play for Donnell Howard. We've mentioned his name a couple of times uh, playing a soft cushion on a, a receiver for Clarion and allowing a catch and allowing a couple of first downs. That's a good, a tight defensive play there by Shepard and forcing that ball to be tipped up in the air. Again, a great job by Donnell Howard. And then coming in, making the interception, a great job by Hassan Marshall. Great field position, just what you talked about. And Shepard without a turnover in the first two games of the year. Now in the first half today, two of them. Let's keep this going. Let's see if the offense now can capitalize with 9.57 to play in the half, down 10-6. And we'll see if this helps. They're starting in the area in which they usually stall out drives in. And 
Time I think yeah, Ernie McCook's going to take a timeout, time here. Out, time out here. All right, let's go ahead and take a 30-second break, and then we will return to Memorial Stadium in Clarion, Pennsylvania, where we have 9.57 to play in the first half, and it's Clarion leading Shepard 10-6. Back again, along with Matt Crawford, I'm Matt Miller, Caleb Falero, our engineer at the studio. Thanks to Eric Sterick, along with John Alderton here at Memorial Stadium for our TV10 broadcast coverage. First and 10 now from the 23 of Clarion Ram football. Pistol formation, Bajent has Glover behind him. There is the play action pass, deep over the middle, looking for Devin Phelps, over top of his head. Looked like a nudge right at the last second as well, and no penalty marker comes down as that pass ended up sailing a little bit high. It looked like in coverage was Corey Wells, number 21. Yeah, yep. I'm with you. It didn't, it looked like Devin Phelps was trying to go up and fully extend on that play and never got the opportunity to get his hands fully extended in the end zone. Not saying he would have come down with it. I still think that ball's a little high. Devin Phelps more of the speed guy, not necessarily the leap out of the gym guy. Uh, but uh, I'm with you. I think there was some definite contact going up to get that football. Second down and 10 from the 23 of the Golden Eagles. Out of the gun. There's the play action, and it's the quarterback keeper coming near side. Bajan gets to the 20-yard line and then goes down. Looked like he wanted to make a cut, but was slipping as Jordan Smith, the redshirt freshman linebacker, was right there. I'm sure he'll get credit for the tackle. That game good for three. Matt, it's third and seven. Third and long again as they're now on the outskirts of the red zone. And I think you're in a position now where if you don't get this first down. I think you're well enough in field goal territory. You got to get the points, but hopefully they can get a first down here. Third and seven from the Clarion 20. Bajan to throw along the near side, looking for Devin Phelps, and a penalty marker does come down this time. Well, Phelps was getting play. tripped up on the play by Corey Wells, as Wells slipped while trying to stay with Phelps coming out of the cut. Yeah, and I think that definitely Defense. impacted uh, Devin Phelps going to get that football and a great throw and a great route ran by Devin Phelps in that quick cut. Devin ended up dealing with some injuries in the lower body, so it's good to see he's able to make those tight cuts today. Haven't called his name with a catch yet, uh, but still nice to see he's able to uh, run around out there today. That's 11 yards on that penalty, so five penalties, 49 yards now on Clarion, a spot of the foul penalty. The Rams will get that first down as it's now first and goal at the nine. Play action pass over the middle. Devin Phelps with the grab at the one, absorbs the hit, falls into the end zone, hits a Shepard Ram touchdown, and at the end of the play, penalty marker is thrown back in behind the play. And there wasn't any contact, so I'm thinking it's got to be some sort of verbal jawing of, of some sort and indications. Ineligible receiver downfield against the Rams that will nullify what would have been a nine-yard touchdown pass. Matt, What's could that flag have come in any later for that kind of a penalty? Yeah, I was going to say. Uh, Devin Phelps in the end zone already before that flag comes out. They're celebrating before that flag comes out. Yeah, I was thinking the same Devin thing, and that moves it back. And now for the Rams, I've got three penalties, 25 yards. That one very costly. Put it down at the 14-yard line where it's first down and goal to go. Back to throw is Bajan, looking far side and throwing out of the back of the end zone. Incomplete and not good news for the Rams as Greg Leonard comes up limping at the end of the play. He goes out of the back of the end zone and goes right down onto all fours. Yeah, that's a right leg injury. Look like definitely below the knee. I don't know if it's a calf cramp or whether rolled his ankle a bit, but definitely that right leg is not feeling the way it's supposed to and the way he's not trying to put a lot of pressure on it. That looks like a little more than a cramp. Uh, you wonder if he rolled the ankle or something. He's going to be helped to that far sideline. Good show of sportsmanship there as one of the defensive backs, Sam Ferrari, a senior safety for Clarion, actually helping Leonard until more of the training staff could get out to lead into that far sideline. 
And we talking to uh, Coach Josh Klein, defensive coordinator Josh Klein, on a Thursday, and we're talking about some of the injuries that some of those speed guys get when they are slowing down and then have to quickly throw it in gear again. And uh, that's when a lot of hamstrings get pulled. And the way that he quickly took weight off that leg, you wonder if that wasn't a little bit of a tweak to that hamstring. And for a receiver, that is a, a dangerous injury because those for, for receivers, because of the quick movement, are those injuries that can really uh, kind of not go away and linger for long periods of time. Well, you hate to see that for Greg Leonard. For the Rams, if it could happen at any position, they're as deep as anywhere yeah. a wide receiver. Second down, goal to go from the Clarion 14 after the Rams picked off a pass to give them this great field position. Can they take advantage? Play action pass, and the throw not going to be made. Penalty marker down on the play as well as Tyson Bajan gets taken down, sacked on the play by Jordan Smith, the linebacker. Now we'll check and see what that penalty marker is going to be. It's down at the line of scrimmage uh, at the far side of the field. That was Dylan Brewer who came in motion, and it looked like Bajan wanted to get him the pass in the flat off the left side with the defense for Clary and read that one. A defender stepped up to pick up Brewer, and with the incompletion or the sack pardon me now we wait and see where the penalty is going to be marked from offside defense offside defense so the play doesn't even count as the offside penalty is going to move it back down to the nine yard line and it'll be second and goal to go from there wow yeah, i figured it had to be lining up in the neutral zone based on where that flag was thrown and how quickly into the play that flag was thrown not nearly quick enough to be a hold on either side and the Rams bailed out there after Tyson Bajan was sacked on that play. I've got six penalties, 54 yards now for Clarion and on second and goal from the nine, little dump off pass to Dylan Brewer at the five yard line taken down there. Nice tackle in the open field for Sam Ferrari. Brewer on the reception. So four yards on that pass completion to Dylan Brewer, seven of 10 passing for 112 yards in the first half for Bajan. Fifth play of this possession. And it's third down and goal to go from the five. 820 and counting now on a running second quarter clock. And does this seem like the longest goal to go series we've seen all year so far? 10-6, Clarion clinging to that lead. The Rams trying to take their first lead if they could get into the end zone here. Bajan out of the gun, looking near side, lets it go, low back, shoulder throw, and in and out of the hands of Alex Wetzel, the tight end who had lined up as a wide out. A little hand checking going on with a defensive back. Wetzel got his hands on it, though, and could not bring it in. It looked like Cameron Sutherland, the 6'1 senior from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, in on the coverage on Alex Wetzel. And Wetzel, a big body out there, has really grown into that body since last year, something you and I have noticed in being drive. around him this year. And just a good defense by Sutherland to knock that out at the last minute. From the 12-yard line along the near side hash mark will come a 22-yard field goal attempt for Hayden August Scriven. First field goal attempt of the season, and he drills it up, drills it through, and a late penalty marker now down on the play. Let's wait and see what it is that we will have. And is this one that could give the Rams an opportunity to take the points off the board and have a first and goal situation all over again? That is a unique call because that was very close to when the whistle blew of that ball going through the uprights. Long snapper Tyler Stern pumping his fist a little bit as he then made his way over to the far sideline. Our head referee going to go over and talk with Ram head coach Ernie McCook and explain the situation. Uh, do you take the points off the board? Right now it would be 10-9, but if you've got a chance to get that football, half the distance to the goal would put it down at about the two and a half yard line meanwhile one of the officials coming over to talk to chris weibel weibel holds many of the clearing and passing records as he graduated here in 1998 has been a long time assistant and now in his fifth year as a head coach 18 wins 28 losses and was the quarterback the last time these two teams played back in 98 and 99. meanwhile josh klein using leverage after this, is the goal. First yep, the Rams are going to take the points off the board. It was an illegal use of leverage to try to block that field goal attempt, and so the Rams will take it. That is now going to be seven penalties, 56 yards now for Clarion. 
And the Rams will take that football at the two and a half yard line. And once again, hate to get on the officials here because I like that call for Shepard, obviously giving you a first and goal at the two and a half yard line. But again, another very late penalty flag being thrown on what that penalty was. That should be a quick flag being thrown in uh, from behind the end zone. That was uh, being thrown as the whistle was being blown as uh, the field goal was good. Now we have a stoppage of play as our head referee coming over to explain things to Coach Weibel. As we talked with Josh Klein, the Ram defensive coordinator, he said he doesn't remember much of the 98 game. He was a freshman on the <laughs> sideline, scared to death of his then defensive coordinator, <laughs> Jeff Castile. But he did get some playing time in that 99 game. By the way, the Rams won both of those. First and goal from just outside the two. Handoff Deontay Glover met in the hole and taken down. No gain on the play. Knifing in there was Quinlan Lambert. He is a senior strong safety. And Matt, you didn't quite elaborate the way Coach Klein did on Coach Second Castile. I believe he called him the most terrifying man alive that, that at he that did. point. <laughs> that he did. Second and goal from the two play action pass. And in the back of the end zone, wide open. Alex Wetzel pulls that one in. He wasn't going to miss that one. Very nicely executed as Tyson Bajan gave the little play action, rolled to his right, and found his tight end for six. Yeah, great bootleg pass, and just not enough guys in the secondary following the football and following Bajan to this near side of the field. One of the easiest pitch and catches that Tyson Bajan and Alex Wetz will ever have. Bajan now 8 of 12, passing 114 yards, a pair of touchdown passes. He's got seven TD passes on the season. First touchdown catch for Wetzel. Hayden August Scriven for the point after snap. His back kick is up, and it is good. Let's take a break. Seven minutes, 31 seconds remaining in our first half, and Shepard now has their first lead on top of Clarion, 13-10. to 10. Hi, this is Eric from Hagerstown Ford. I keep telling you that Hagerstown Ford has completely changed the car buying experience forever. And with a return policy easier than Walmart, Hagerstown Ford has a goal to deliver 350 cars and trucks per month. And when I say deliver, I mean deliver to you, where you are, just like Amazon does. And if you don't want it, return it. No questions asked. The only way Hagerstown Ford can accomplish this extremely aggressive goal is to make the car buying process fast and easy. We simply refuse to play the dumb back and forth games that most dealerships want to play. There's absolutely no reason for you to waste your precious time at a car dealership. I assure you, there is no dealership from Winchester, Virginia to Washington, D.C. that can beat our price. There's no dealership that will allow you to return your new car if you don't want it. Hagerstown Ford absolutely has the best price, and we'll bring the car to you. And if you don't want it, return it, period. No questions asked. There's no reason to buy anywhere else. Visit HagerstownFord.com to schedule your VIP experience and get your new ride delivered to you. Contact dealer for details. Drive summary brought to you by former Ram Mike Folk running for governor in West Virginia. Accountable, ethical, responsible. Learn more at Folk, the number four, WV.com. Paid for by Michael Folk for governor. Well, after the INT for the Rams. Hassan Marshall, which set up the Shepard offense at the 23 of Clarion. Seven plays, two minutes, 26 seconds later. Alex Wetzel receiving the pass from Tyson Bajan. And the two-yard touchdown reception puts Shepard in front for the first time now. 13 to 10. And a 22-yard field goal was taken off the board as a uh, leverage penalty called against Clarion. And that allowed for the uh, Rams to take the three off and go for seven and got just what they wanted. Also got to credit Donnell Howard on that interception with the pass breakup, allowing that ball to be tipped into the air and be run down by Hassan Marshall. If your Ram head coach, Ernie McCook, and offense coordinator Ty Hyatt, you still got to be concerned going into the locker room at the half that you're, you've yet to establish any type of ground game in this one at all. Yeah, it's been their Achilles heel so far this season, and you've seen little spurts of it today. Uh, but quite frankly, I don't think Shepard's put together a long enough drive that they could truly establish the, the ground game and not what you want out of the ensuing kickoff as it goes out of bounds at about the four-yard line. Great field position going to be coming up for Clarion. Yeah, Hayden August to Scriven not quite hitting that one the way he wanted to. And that one goes out, and Clarion will take it at their own 35. So pretty decent field position. Let's see if that Ram defense can come up with another stop. They've had a pair of INTs here in this first half, 
An interception on the very first series for Clarion as Donnell Howard picked one off, and then it was the interception for Hassan Marshall that led to the last Ram touchdown that has Shepard out in front. Who's coming out at quarterback? It looks to be Jeff Clemens, the redshirt senior, 6'3", 215. Clemens started at quarterback, ran a couple of series, then gave way to Michael Proyos. And Proyos, after a couple of series now, turns the reins back over to Clemens. On first down, fullback starts in motion, moves from the left to the right side of his guard and tackle. He'll be a lead blocker as the handoff to Miley McGriff. And McGriff picks up about two, maybe three yards. And you got to wonder what the difference is between the two quarterbacks. When you see this at the high school level, a lot more than at the college level because you don't really see a difference in offenses at the college level and haven't seen a whole lot a difference in, or a whole lot of difference in the play calling today for Clarion between the two quarterbacks. So not sure uh, what causes uh, the switch or what may change during that switch. Still looks like a lot of uh, play action and uh, read option yeah. stuff out of the shotgun formation no matter what quarterback is in the backfield. On a second and seven, Clements has a back to each side as he takes that snap, has plenty of time, throwing deep along the near side, open receiver, and did he make that grab? No, incomplete, says our referee, as Terrell Ford could not grab it with his feet inbounds. Well, he was waiting there, camped underneath that football, and he can't believe it because for how long he was standing there, I think he was convinced that he would have made the catch in the NFL right there with both feet in but apparently going to get that football that had to be thrown a little bit further as coming in on the backside to make the play. Donnell Howard coming back in coverage. That ball to be thrown a little further into the bench area, just carrying him out of bounds. But that is a very close play to moving a clearing into Shepard territory. Yeah, the Rams catch a break there, and now on a third down and seven, the play action pass, and the quarterback flushed from the pocket, throwing far side in the pass, tipped and almost intercepted. Great effort by that Ram defensive back, Tim Womack. He's listed as a linebacker, got a hand on it, and almost brought it in. And that's the second one that Womack has almost brought in today. Shepard has two interceptions in the first half. You think about it, could very easily have at least three right now, possibly four with that one. So the possession lasts three and out as the punting unit comes on, and it will be the first time that we have seen a punt from James Metzger. Metzger averaging just under 40 yards a kick, along of 46, has punted seven times on this season. Snap is back. He gets it out of there. Wobbly kick, angling far side. Hauled in at the 25-yard line. That's Lewis back there for the return. Able to get by the first guy, but quickly goes down after a return of just a couple of yards. The punt will cover 37 yards, and the return just about two, maybe three yards. And the Rams with 6.27 to play in the first half, ready for just their sixth offensive, pardon me, fifth offensive possession of this first half. And Matt, this has got to be your drive if you're Shepard. You've set it up time-wise, and your defense has given you the football with over six minutes left, 627. This is primed to be a long touchdown drive for Shepard. Pound the football, establish the running game, and it looks like Ronnie Brown going to be in the backfield. At tailback. And handoff goes to Brown. He gets an opening right at the line of scrimmage, breaks the tackle into secondary, gets to that far sideline, spun around and taken out of bounds beyond the 40, and they'll mark him all the way out Ronnie to the 44 the yard line, 17 on the game. And Ronnie Brown, the freshman from Dundalk, does a very good job. Not only you see the quickness as soon as he gets the football, but his hesitation and then his ability to downshift quickly and hit a hole or bounce it to the outside is unlike Ty Hebron or Deontay Glover. They're more of find a hole and hit it immediately where Ronnie Brown is going to be the guy that dances around a little bit in the backfield. And you've seen some excitement from him so far with a couple of carries he's got in the season so far. And just like that, another penalty going to go on Shepard and move them back in the wrong direction. Yep, it is a false start penalty on Shepard. Trying to look back through my records and see what I've got. I would have that as about four penalties for 30 yards in this first half called on the Rams. And it becomes a first and 15 now with the football back at their own 39. 
Bajan taking that snap, handing it off. Brown gets met as he tries to find some room to the right and quickly taken down. It'll be a loss on the play and just an inability to get the block on Dante Paul, the 260-pound redshirt junior defensive lineman. Yeah, Joseph Fisher got blown up on that right side of the offensive line, the right tackle, and got pushed back into the backfield. By the time he was able to reestablish his footing, Ronnie Brown was already being taken down in the backfield. Nowhere for him to go, even as elusive as he is. Lost a yard. It'll make it a second down and 16. Back to throw. Bajan lets it go far side. Grab is made. Looks like Dylan Brewer slips through a couple of tacklers and picks up about five more yards, getting back into Clarion territory to the 48. Brewer on the reception. That's 14 yards on that pass completion, and it'll make it a very manageable third and two. So that's a big second down play. Dylan Brewer picking up where he left off last week with double digits in receiving catches in uh, over 100 yards. From the 48 of Clarion on third and short, Bajan wants to throw, dumps it off, and has his man out of the backfield. That's Deontay Glover. He'll have the first down to the 40 of the Golden Eagle. And you see the power of Deontay Glover when he can run downhill. He was able to turn and go about two yards before the first contact was made, and he's able to get ahead of steam, lower that shoulder, and he's got the power. There's no question about the power. He has a big set of legs on him, and he's just got to get that football more and more, and he's got to get into a rhythm, whether it's on the ground or whether it's through the air. On first and ten, pass coming near side, in and out of the hands of the target, Josh Pulse, the redshirt freshman wide receiver, was just a little bit high and he couldn't bring it in and Paul's feeling the pressure right there from uh, what looked like number six Chris Gildea from the 40 yard line of Clarion it'll now be a second and 10 I've got 10 of 15 passing 136 yards and a pair of touchdowns in this first half for Tyson Bajan 408 to play in the half and it is a 13 to 10 lead for Shepard. Bajan to throw along the near side. Wide open is the wide receiver. That is Dudney who turns it upfield. He'll go out of bounds at the 24 yard line. That's a gain of 16 and another Ram first down. And this is the depth of wide receiver we're talking about. You have two guys on the last two targets that are younger receivers that are guys you can just throw in when you need to get those one, two, and three guys a little bit of rest. And Clarion you're going to use a timeout here. First charge timeout of the half, so still two to go with 3.53 left on the first half clock. Yeah, two timeouts for each team through the final 3.53 in this first half. Ram football first and 10 coming from the Clarion 24. Thanks to our sponsors, Hagerstown Ford, Panhandle Dumpsters, the Marius Group and Ameriprise Financial Advisors, Phil McCoy and John Everson, Joe Ferretti Law Office, Green Tree Realty, Mike Folk for Governor, and our title sponsor, Smallwood Small Insurance. Without them, we couldn't be here today to bring you the action. Glad that you could join us on TV10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. We'll be following the Rams each game throughout the course of this football season and looking to bring you men's and women's home basketball games throughout the upcoming winter season as well. Matt, still a half of football and then some to play here, but the two previous meetings between these two schools, in 98 it was Shepard beating Clarion 7-0, and then in 99 Shepard beating him 27-20, so both of these games uh, in the previous meetings have been one possession games, and right now this is looking like that could be a third time's a charm as well. From the Clarion 24, Ram football first and 10, empty backfield for Tyson Bajan. Looking far side, throwing towards the goal line, and the catch is made. Backpedaling as he brought that one in on the far side of the field. Is that Deontay Glover? It is, it Glover. is. So Glover, as a running back, lined up more as a wide out in that set and went down that far sideline and pulls it in a 24-yard scoring strike. Yeah, wanting more of what looked like a wheel route to that far side than going straight up the sideline. And a great throw by Tyson Bajan. He misses that one just a little bit short, and it's either deflected or intercepted. And a great job by Deontay Glover knowing where the sideline is and knowing how much wiggle room he had in bringing that one in for a touchdown. Hayden August Scriven for the extra point. Noah Pohl is the holder, and the kick is up, and it is good. Don't go away. 
Three minutes, 46 seconds remaining in our first half, and your lead now for Shepard over Clarion is 20 to 10. They're my closest friends. We've been through a lot together. Seeing our kids off to college, Kelly losing her mom, my 50th birthday, I trust them with so much. So when it came to my finances, I trusted Kelly's referral to her Ameriprise advisor. Beth gives me the comprehensive advice that helps me feel confident my financial future is secure. With the right financial advisor, life can be brilliant. Ameriprise Financial. If you have been injured in an auto accident or due to someone's negligence and you want to know what your rights are, call Ferretti Law Office at 264-8505 to discuss your claim for free. Attorney Joe Ferretti is prepared to answer your questions and explain your options. Put Joe Ferretti's legal experience and history of proven results in your corner to fight the bullies from the insurance companies. At Ferretti Law Office, we're here to help you win. The scoring drive for Shepard, seven plays, 73 yards, took him two minutes and 41 seconds, 24 yards on the scoring strike from Bajant to Glover, 20 to 10, that Ram advantage. Kick away off the foot of Hayden August Scriven along that far side. That looks to be Ford again on the return, and it is. Terrell Ford has done a nice job with the kick returns, moving out beyond the 20 to the 23-yard line. Still plenty of time with 3.40 left in this first half and two timeouts. Anxious to see what happens if this Ram defense can make a good stop on first end or second down. Shepard still with two timeouts left. And in college football, you get somewhat of a timeout each time you get a first down just because the clock stops while they move the chain. So if Shepard can force a quick three and out here, don't be surprised if they can get a quick two for one here at the end of the half. Jeff Clemens, the quarterback, has a back to his right side. That looks to be McGriff. He's going to be a blocker for the quarterback as Clemens wanted to run and no place to go. Sneaking in to get him from behind is Dustin Fisher. And who had him underneath? I'm still looking. Is that a 5 9? Ah, the way his jersey is kind of bottled up. Yeah, it is a 59 for the Rams. That would be Ricky Robinson. And, Matt, that 43, Amante Vaught, actually. It's one of those numbers where there's a couple of 43s oh. on the roster. There you go. So, Amante Vaught, a defensive end. No gain. No loss on the play. Second down and 10 coming. Oh, no, a loss of three, pardon me, as it's back at the 20-yard line. And a penalty marker down right at the snap of the football, and that usually means an offensive mistake. False start. Offense. And right you nine. are. Five-yard penalty. False start on the offense, minus five. Back him up a little bit further. Again, looking back through the records, eight penalties now for 61 yards in this first half, the unofficial number on Clarion. We'll see if we can effort the official stats coming up at the half, which is now just two minutes and 40 seconds away. you got to wonder when Coach Ernie McCook is going to start to use these timeouts, whether he saves one for if they get the ball back offensively or uses both on defense. Clemens handing that one off. McGriff, no place to go. He slowed down, tried to let the blocking set up. There was none. He shifted to his right and quickly got taken down. They'll mark his progress out to about the 17, maybe the 18, and now the Rams do go ahead and burn a timeout. And you got to wonder what the three or four second run off. If you're going to call the timeout, call it as soon as the... The That's player the hits the time ground time and the timeout. play is stopped. I think there was four or five seconds ran off the clock right there before the timeout was called. I'm not sure I understand the, the purpose of that, whether they're just indecisive on whether he wanted the timeout on third down or if they get the stop on third down. Now there was a gain of a three. I've got 11 carries, 38 yards in this first half for McGriff, who came in with 299 yards or an average of 6.8 a carry and three rushing touchdowns. 
He got off to a good start. Matt, an 18-yard gain on his very second touch, a 10-yard gain on the very next play. But since that time, when he had 27 yards, he's only been able to add 11 more to it. Yeah, you were looking early at why he was averaging about 6.8 yards a carry and 149 a game. Uh, but right now, Shepard's uh, big men up front, the linebacker core doing a very good job of creating pressure and not allowing Claren to do anything running the football. 218 remaining in our first half. Shepard with a 20 to 10 lead. And Clarion facing a third down and 12 from their own 18 yard line. They are two of four on third down conversions here in this first half. Have not attempted a fourth down. Meanwhile, Shepard. Third 0 down. for 1 on 4th downs, 2 of 4 on 3rd down conversions. On 3rd down and 12, Jeff Clemens in the gun. McGriff, it looks like, to his right side. Three receivers here to this wide side left. There is the snap. Receiver screen to this near side. Grab is made, and that is Ford initially sidestepping a tackle, but then quickly taken down at the 21. That gain will be good for three, and the field goal unit will come on, and I believe Shepard's going to go ahead and burn that last time out. They will. All right, let's take a 30-second break, and then we'll come back and see how this one plays out. Still plenty of time, 2.09 left in our first half. Should be a punt coming for Clarion when we return with Shepard leading the Golden Eagles 20-10. For over 36 years, Green Tree Realty has been helping the Shepherdstown community find a place to call home. Our friendly team is ready to help you navigate the market and is your trusted resource complete with a wealth of experience and local knowledge. For those looking to buy land, commercial property, or a home, we'll help you find the perfect fit. From staging and negotiations to closing and beyond, we're with you every step of the way. Now the Shepherd Rams looking to make it back-to-back -back victories after a loss in their opener at home against Ohio Dominican 24-21. Shepherd with a 22-17 win on the road at Mercyhurst last week. Next week, the Rams return home for the first time Fourth since down. September 7th, and it's homecoming Mentoring with Cutstown coming into Rams Stadium. Looking forward to that one. Always fun and a great environment when all the alumni come in for homecoming. Good breeze blowing right now, somewhat across the field as the snap goes back to Metzger and he gets it out of there. Low line drive kick and a bounce in Ram territory and getting out of the way of that one, probably a good decision for Zane Lewis, but it does take a huge clarion roll all the way down to the 18-yard line, and that punt is going to cover 61 yards. And yeah, that one pretty much just flip-flop in the field, a friendly clarion roll. So the Rams with no timeouts now and 2.09 left starting at their reset own the 18. The they will the reset. On the game clock. Whoa, 154 on the game clock. I'm guessing that clock didn't start. No, it did not. Yeah. It did not. Helps if you press the, the start button when that ball snapped. Is that how that works? I think so. I'm not an expert clock operator or anything, but I would think it'd be pretty cut and dry. Bajan on first down, handing that football off. Ty Hebron coming here to the near side. Will pick up oh, just about five, maybe six yards. Mark him out to the 24. It is a six-yard gain. Second and four for the Rams, and it looks like they may be content to take, take it, it into the, the locker room. And that is that what, number two on the day for Ty Hebron? Yep, Hebron had one carry, no Second yards earlier four. in this one. So from the 24 on a second and four. Bajan out of the gun, now does want to throw. Deep along the near side, looking for Devin Phelps, who cannot quite get to it. I think if Phelps is healthy, number one, he Devin probably gets Devin there and or probably makes a diving effort at that one, but dealing with a, a hip injury right now, just unable to get out to that one. Yeah, Corey Wells, the DV playing right there, the red shirt junior, 5'10", 175, out of Stonebridge High School in Sterling, Virginia. I don't know exactly what his speed is, but we know Devin Phelps runs somewhere around a 4-3-40. Not a whole lot of guys are running that quick of a 40-yard dash. And, yeah, I just don't think he's 100% right now. 
On third down and four, Bajan again wants to throw, has some time deep over the middle. Dylan Brewer leaps into the air and makes the grab over the top of a defensive back. He's across midfield. It'll be marked down at around the 49 of Clarion. And Dylan Brewer is turning into a guy right in front of our very eyes. You just toss it up, and he is going to go get the football. Right now, he is about as sure-handed as you could possibly be. And Tyson Bajan is just going to spike it to stop the clock on first down. Second down and ten. No timeouts for Shepard, 107 on now a stopped second quarter clock. Shepard with that long play to Dylan Brewer, looking like they may have a little bit of magic in. I'm hoping maybe they can at least get into field goal range and make it a 13-point lead going into the halftime break. After the spike, it brings up second down and 10 from the 49 of Clarion. Bajan has three receivers to the near side. Looking to that far side, now dumps it off, and out of the backfield, Ty Hebron makes that grab. Gains about four yards Hebron to the 45. Reception. And those are the ones that hurt in this kind of two-minute situation like this with no timeouts. Third down and a six coming, and Bajant wants to throw. Flush from the pocket, now rolling to that far side, gives a little pump fake, throws it deep, and penalty marker down as Alex Wetzel was trying to wrestle his way by the defensive back Cameron Sutherland, and we're probably going to have either pass interference or a hold. Meanwhile, we have Quinlan Lambert, a safety, down and injured at the 33-yard line. Yeah, definitely going to be a penalty on Sutherland as he had that arm around the waist. Our head referee making his way towards the middle of the field where it looks like we'll get the indication on that penalty and where it will be mar marked off from and to. I have to ask Chip Ransom, Sports Information Director for Shepard. Holding defense number 26. Ten-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. So it was plus 10 on the hold. Unofficially nine penalties, 71 yards in the first seconds. half on... Clarion. Team. That came on a third down and six. I would have the Rams four of six on third down conversions and picking up their 11th first down as a result of that penalty. And the football goes down to the 35 in Clarion territory. The injured player to his feet. Anyway, I was saying I have to ask Chip, exactly how you handle a spike. I don't believe that goes against Tyson Bajan because he's purposefully downing it just to stop that clock. I believe that goes down against a team passing statistic. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure on that one. I think, I think you may be right, but I could see both. I could see that going down as an incomplete pass because, well, it is an incomplete pass with no intended receiver. Bajan. Play action pass on a first down and 10. Has some time. Now the pocket collapses. He gets spun down. Sacked on the play. That looks to be a five, and that is Safe Khan, a six foot, 250 pound senior with that sack. You're on the outskirts of field goal range right there. If you're Tyson Bajan, you got to get rid of that football in some way. You, you got to move around the pocket and at least get that ball out of bounds. He's right now the clock running under 20, 17 seconds left now, and they're going to have to struggle to get into field goal range again to stop the clock. Second down and 14. Bajan to throw along the near side as an open man. That's Dylan Brewer. He's got to get out of bounds. And he does. He's able to sidestep an initial tackle and then goes out at the 21-yard line. That's an 18-yard gain, four seconds left. And you hope that Dylan Brewer, he was open enough that <laughs> you hope he was able to look at the scoreboard and see the time as he was making that catch because he spun immediately back into the field. I'm sure not really knowing what he was about to spin into. And that's a, that's a good heads-up play and I think a, a lucky play for Dylan Brewer to get back out of bounds. And now a, a makeable field goal opportunity here. And that was a good two-minute drive down. right there by Shepard, whether this goes through or not. 38-yard field goal attempt for Hayden August Scriven. He was good from 22 yards earlier, but they took it off the board after a penalty for illegal use of a defender for leverage on the Clarion special teams. And Shepard ended up punching that one in to take a 13 to 10 lead. They've extended that lead to 20 to 10. And Hayden August Scriven now going to have to think about it a little bit longer as Clarion burns their final timeouts. Uh, Coach Weibel and his staff wanting August Scriven to think about it. See if he can punch it through for his first field goal of the season. 
should be a big one to give the Rams a 13-point edge going into the locker room and give them their most points in a game this season. Right, 21 in game one, 22 yeah. in game two. Right now, make that at the half. At 20 points, yeah. Noah Pohl is the holder. He's the punter. Tyler Stern, the graduate senior, I guess you might say, has the long snapper. Snap is a good one back. Hold is down. Kick is up. That looks good from here, and it is good. 38-yard field goal good on the final play of the first half, and the Rams will go into the locker room out in front 23-10. to We'll get into our halftime activities after this timeout. We'll return to Memorial Stadium. This is Shepherd Ram football on TV10. My name is Monica. I'm an elementary school teacher. My name is Mitch. I'm a graphic design specialist. We have four children. Currently we have life and auto insurance with Erie. Our agent is helping us to move our homeowner's insurance to Erie as well. They've always been a good company and good customer service. If anything ever happens to me, my family will be protected. Your local Erie agent in Martinsburg is Smallwood and Small Insurance. Get a quote at smallwoodandsmall.com. Let's talk trash, because when it comes to trash, you have options. Panhandle Dumpsters is a local family-owned garbage hauling company serving both residential and commercial customers with weekly trash pickup, dumpster service, yard waste pickup, and ball pickups, too. Panhandle Dumpsters will give you a free trash can and provide curbside service for just $23 a month. Panhandle Dumpsters features a fleet of quieter, eco-friendly garbage trucks, thereby reducing the noise usually associated with pickup. Switch now and save up to 30%. Call 833-DUMP-STR, panhandledumpsters.com. Hello, I'm Michael Falk, a lifelong resident of West Virginia, husband and father. I worked my way through school and life with honesty, hard work, and determination. These principles have served me well in athletics, education, farming, and aviation, and have carried me through years of fighting for a more accountable government at the local and state level. These same core principles will allow me to serve you well in Charleston. I believe true leadership is sticking your neck out for right, even when it goes against the establishment. You can help me put principle over politics and beat the odds one more time. We're at the half. Time for a scoring recap, stats and analysis, scores from around the PSAC and Super Region 1, the Division 1 Top 25, and the latest on the West Virginia University Mountaineers and Marshall University Thundering Herd. Let's get it started as we go back to the field and rejoin our TV10 broadcast team. Back into Memorial Stadium. I'd say we're on the campus of Clarion University, but actually that would be lying. Down just a little bit from the campus. Beautiful athletic facilities here, as you can see on our TV10 broadcast, looking out across the field, the beautiful hillsides, and then off to the left, you've got the soccer field, uh, practice field at least, a practice grass football field. You've got a softball field and a baseball field off in the distance as well. Beautiful turf surface here with the six-lane blue track. I said when we arrived, I thought we were back at Glenville State in the Mountain East Conference days, but as it turns out, we're in Clarion, Pennsylvania as the Rams play their first season in the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. Well, along with Matt Crawford, I'm Matt Miller. We got John Alderton along with Eric Sterick helping us uh, with our cameras and our uh, on-site production. Meanwhile, back at the studio, it is Caleb Falero. Our halftime show is brought to you by WVU Medicine Berkeley and Jefferson Medical Centers, the best in health care close to home. Well, Matt, let's uh, begin by just recapping the scoring in this one as Shepard would get the opening possession and from the 45-yard line of Clarion, they would uh, well ultimately end up with a three plays and 
out. Clarion would get the football and an INT for the Rams. Donnell Howard shut up, set up, pardon me, that Shepard offense uh, unable to uh, take advantage. Uh, then the Rams getting the football back and uh, they get a one play 61 yard drive, took just 10 seconds as Tyson Bajan was able to connect with Dylan Brewer. Shepard at that point, uh, let's see, uh, getting to within six at seven to six. My apologies. As I'm looking back at my sheet, how did I miss an eight-minute, 45-second drive from Clarion? I have no idea. That that's an issue for for you to figure out. I'm looking at it right here, so yeah. I didn't miss it. I, I will figure I, I'll, it I'll out. I'll blame you for that one. But it was Clarion getting the first points. 17 plays, 93 yards, eight minutes, 45 seconds, and it was a fumble by the fullback recovered in the end zone by the quarterback as uh, Jeff Clemens got on it to give Clarion the six to nothing lead. James Metzger added the PAT to make it seven to nothing. Then Shepard got the 61 yard touchdown pass to Dylan Brewer. That cut it to seven to six. That was her score after one. Then it got fun in quarter number two. Take it from there. In quarter number two, it was a Metzger 42 yard field goal. An eight play 51 yard drive going four minutes and 40 seconds. Alex Wetzel, a two-yard touchdown pass from Tyson Bajant. That a two-minute and 26-second drive, seven plays, 23 yards. But remember, that came after, after an interception. And after a big penalty. The Rams had settled, or not settled, but at least went for the points in a 22-yard field goal that was good for Hayden August Scriven, but the leverage penalty on the special teams gave the Rams a new life, and they took advantage. And then capping off a seven-play, 72-yard drive that took just two minutes and 41 seconds. It was a wheel route by Deontay Glover on the far side of the field, the Shepard Ram a side of the football field here at Clarion. A 24-yard pass from Bajan to Glover on that wheel route. That would make the score 20 to 10, and a great two-minute drive at the end of the half. No timeouts. And can we say enough about the sure hands of Dylan Brewer yeah. in this game? He has really uh, stepped up beyond what I think anybody uh, was expecting out of him this year. It was a 38-yard field goal on an eight-play, 61-yard drive in just a minute and 54 seconds, 38 yards in the field goal for Hayden August Scrivens, 23-10, your halftime score here at Memorial Stadium. Got to like the way this Rams team has bounced back after a bit of a slow start, especially offensively as they failed to take advantage of the key early field position on that INT from uh, the uh, Rams' Donnell Howard, but then later as uh, Hassan Marshall picked off a pass, they were able to take advantage and get into the end zone. This offense starting to uh, come to life and finish drives, able to put 23 on the board in the first half. They have scored more points so far in the first half than they did in each of their first two games as a whole. And I think what stands out to me, and we'll look a little more into the individual stats here after our first break, along with some scores from around the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. But I think what stands out to me is Tyson Bajant has done a very good job of not trying to force anything today. The first two games, you saw two interceptions that were him trying to force something that was, I don't want to say lucky to work once, but was a tight throw once, and he was flirting with fate, if you will, trying <laughs> to go to it a second time. Has not done that yet in the first half, and both those interceptions the last two weeks have come in the first half. So I think that's a step in the right direction for Bajan, finding open guys and not forcing anything, taking sacks instead of trying to force anything, and I like that out of Bajan so far today. Well, the Rams with the lead at the half, 23-10. When we come back, we'll see what else is going on around the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference and Super Region 1. We'll check in on Mountaineer football and Marshall football this weekend as well. This is Shepherd Ram football on TV10. If you hang the WVU Medicine sign, it certainly has helped take us to another level. Evolving what we try to do as physicians and as a health system and organization is the mission of WVU Medicine, and it's an exciting mission to be a part of. With the knowledge and the, the years of practice that they've put into this institution, you know, they, they know a lot, they can help you, and they've helped me a lot. Having people treated locally uh, enhances their overall uh, care. Hi, this is Eric from Hagerstown Ford. I keep telling you that Hagerstown Ford has completely changed the car buying experience forever. And with a return policy easier than Walmart, Hagerstown Ford has a goal to deliver 350 cars and trucks per month. And when I say deliver, I mean deliver to you, where you are, just like Amazon does. 
And if you don't want it, return it. No questions asked. The only way Hagerstown Ford can accomplish this extremely aggressive goal is to make the car buying process fast and easy. We simply refuse to play the dumb back and forth games that most dealerships want to play. There's absolutely no reason for you to waste your precious time at a car dealership. I assure you, there is no dealership from Winchester, Virginia to Washington, D.C. that can beat our price. There's no dealership that will allow you to return your new car if you don't want it. Hagerstown Ford absolutely has the best price, and we'll bring the car to you. And if you don't want it, return it, period. No questions asked. There's no reason to buy anywhere else. Visit HagerstownFord.com to schedule your VIP experience and get your new ride delivered to you. Contact dealer for details. Back again here at Memorial Stadium, Matt Crawford taking a look at scores from around the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. No games on Thursday this week, and quite frankly, I am okay with that all Saturday action this week around the PSAC. A game in the fourth quarter that is going to go the way of Kutztown, 35-10 to over Gannon, the game that kicked off at 12 noon, already in the fourth quarter, so that game moving right along. And certainly one to keep an eye on as Kutztown will be the next opponent for your Shepherd Rams. It's homecoming at Rams Stadium next Saturday. Into the second half between Westchester and Seton Hill. No shock here. Westchester up 26-0 to over Seton Hill. In the second quarter, another 1 o'clock kick. It is Cal UP all over Shippensburg, 35-0. to Matt, I think that's got to be a surprise of this league this year. It's just the very slow start, not only offensively, but defensively for that Shippensburg Red Raider team. Yeah, no doubt about it. I'm sure that uh, there was a lot more expectation as Shippensburg was picked fourth middle of the pack in the PSAC East and right now and not playing like they're going to finish in that spot. Again, that came in the second quarter, 35-0 Cal UP. At the half, it is East Stroudsburg over Edinburgh, 21-2-7. A 0-0 tie between Mercyhurst and Bloomsburg. That game kicked off just a half hour ago. And then action later on this evening, number 25, IUP taking on Lock Haven. That's a home game for IUP. Number 17, Slippery Rock taking on Millersville. And those rankings are those of the D2Football.com poll. And right now, there are three in that poll from the PSAC that are in the top 25. 17 Slippery Rock, 18 Westchester, and 25 IUP in the D2 football coaches poll. Slippery Rock is all the way up at number 11 seat, receiving 465 votes. Westchester at 18 with 218 votes. And IUP one step ahead with Bowie State being 25. IUP is at 24 with 81 votes. Real quick, let's take a look at some of the Mountain East games before we take our last break, then come back and look at the first half stats. Pulling up those Mountain East scores. A couple of Thursday games this week. Matt, how impressed are you with Frostburg and what they've done coming into the Mountain East? And not only coming into the Mountain East, but making that jump from Division Three to Division Two and not missing a beat so far. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, you knew that they had played very well as they were uh, a Division Three program, but then making that jump up to Division Two, you wondered how it would go, and uh, they have certainly held their own in that Mountain East conference. Including getting a win Thursday, 27-24 at home against West Liberty. Also on Thursday, Urbana beating Wheeling 41-26. On to today's game in the Mountain East Conference, a 12 noon kick between Wesleyan and Charleston. That's a game in the state capital of West Virginia. It's Charleston 27, Wesleyan 8. In the third quarter, Glenville hosting Concord. It's Glenville with a four-point advantage, 17 to 13 in the third quarter. In the fourth quarter of a 12 noon kick, it is Fairmont State beating Notre Dame 35 to 27. One of uh, what's looking like one of the most uh, highly sought-after games uh, this year between two of the top teams in the Mountain East. And a game that just kicked off. It is West Virginia State taking on a new team that I'm not sure I've ever seen uh, play a Mountain East school, at least since the Mountain East was formed, Southeast Missouri. And that's a 0-0 game right now, a kickoff at 2 p.m for that one. So that is your scores of interest around Super Region 1 in the Mountain East and the PSAC. 
All right, we'll uh, check in on uh, the Mountaineers and the Marshall Thundering Herd. West Virginia, pretty easy to check in on them. They haven't even started yet as uh, the Mountaineers are opening Big 12 play at Kansas with a 4.30 kick this afternoon. We've got pregame coverage going on right now over on Talk Radio WRNR and uh, looking to see how the Mountaineers fare in that Big 12 opener. Meanwhile, Marshall on a bye this week. That is after a 33-31 win last weekend against the Ohio Bobcats. So Marshall is off to a 2-1 and one start to the season, enjoying a week off before getting back to action next week. So that wraps up a look at scores. Let's send it back to the studio. We'll take another timeout, and when we return to Memorial Stadium, we'll look at the numbers from the first half. We're at the intermission, and it's Shepard leading Clarion 23-10. to 10. If you have been injured in an auto accident or due to someone's negligence and you want to know what your rights are, call Ferretti Law Office at 264-8505 to discuss your claim for free. Attorney Joe Ferretti is prepared to answer your questions and explain your options. Put Joe Ferretti's legal experience and history of proven results in your corner to fight the bullies from the insurance companies. At Ferretti Law Office, we're here to help you win. They're my closest friends. We've been through a lot together. Seeing our kids off to college, Kelly losing her mom, my 50th birthday, I trust them with so much. So when it came to my finances, I trusted Kelly's referral to her Ameriprise advisor. Beth gives me the comprehensive advice that helps me feel confident my financial future is secure. With the right financial advisor, life can be brilliant. Ameriprise Financial. For over 36 years, Green Tree Realty has been helping the Shepherdstown community find a place to call home. Our friendly team is ready to help you navigate the market and is your trusted resource complete with a wealth of experience and local knowledge. For those looking to buy land, commercial property, or a home, we'll help you find the perfect fit. From staging and negotiations to closing and beyond, we're with you every step of the way. Back again here at Clarion, Pennsylvania, where the Shepherd Rams lead the Clarion Golden Eagles 23-10 to 10 at the intermission. Our WVU Medicine halftime show continuing with a look at first-half stats. They're brought to you by Joe Ferretti Law Office, delivering first-rate service and results for their clients. Vehicle accidents, slip and fall, medical malpractice. Call the Joe Ferretti Law Office for a free consultation at 304-596-8854. All right, I got the uh, team numbers. I'll hand it over to Matt here in a moment for some individual numbers. In the first half, the Shepherd Rams with 13 first downs to Clarion's 11. Shepherd just 28 rushing yards on only nine attempts, while Clarion has run the ball 20 times for 89 yards. That is uh, already more than what the Rams gave up in the first two games combined as they gave up only 77 rushing yards in those two. Yeah, looking very good right now through this portion of the game. That now we look to the passing numbers and just 66 passing yards for Clarion while Tyson Bajan has thrown for 226 yards. So it totals out to 32 plays, 254 yards for the Rams, 34 plays, 155 yards for Clarion. Penalty yards, five for 40 yards for Shepard. Nine penalties, 62 yards in the first half for Clarion. Both teams have gone two for five on third down conversions. Shepard, 0 of one on fourth down. Clarion did not attempt a fourth down conversion. So that is a look at some team numbers for the individual numbers. We turn it over to Matt. All right, Matty, where do you want to start, Clarion or Shepard? I start with those Clarion rushing totals as well as they've run the ball. The rushing totals, uh, right now it's Malik McGriff who allotted his 48 yards on 10 carries coming early in the ball game. Those first couple of series only averaging 4.8 a carry. Remember, he came in averaging 6.8 a carry through two games this season. Scott Florence has 19 yards on four attempts as well. Passing a dual threat again. Jeff Clemens getting the start in this one. He is 5 for 8 with one interception, only 34 yards. 
through the air, has been sacked once. And Michael Oproyos, three for six, another interception, only throwing for 32 yards, has not gone down in this one. I'm like my Griff uh, leading the way in receptions, or at least tied, two receptions, 13 yards. Uh, Terrell Ford, two receptions, 11 yards. And Quinn Zenoble leading in yards. He has the longest reception of the day for Clarion, one reception for 22 yards. Moving over to the Shepherd University Rams, running the football. Ronnie Brown, 15 yards on just two carries. His elusiveness, I think, has worked a little bit better in this game so far. I know only uh, a couple of carries for him, but I think you got to try to get him some more touches and at least um, widen the field out. When you have Hebron and Glover, you know it's most likely going to be between the tackles. With Ronnie Brown, you have no idea where that boy's going to run the football. Uh, Deontay Glover, eight yards on three carries. Ty Hebron, six yards on two carries. Tossing the football around once again, Tyson Bajan having one whale of a first half. 16 for 22, 226 yards, three touchdowns, a long of 61 yards. That was the touchdown to Dylan Brewer. And Brewer, uh, obviously, just all over the stat sheet, receiving six receptions, 138 yards, finally getting into the end zone for the first time this year. He has a touchdown. Deontay Glover, three receptions, 47 yards. He also added a touchdown. And the Ty Hebron three receptions for 20 yards a long of 21. And there are your individual stats for Clarion and Shepard from half number one here at Memorial Stadium. Yeah, there you go. Half number one and Dylan Brewer already has his second straight 100-yard receiving game as he did it last week and has done it in the first half here this week. Numbers brought to you by Joe Peretti Law Office delivering first-rate service and results for their clients. Vehicle accidents, slip and fall, medical malpractice. Call the Joe for Ready Law Office at 304-596-8854 for a free consultation. That'll also wrap up our WVU Medicine Halftime Show. WVU Medicine Berkeley and Jefferson Medical Centers, the best in healthcare, close to home. Now the two teams back out of their respective locker rooms and warming up for our second half. Matt, right now, our candidate for the electrifying play of the game brought to you by Orsini Supplants in Martinsburg has to be that 61-yard touchdown pass to Dylan Brewer that got the Rams on the board after trailing 7 to nothing early. Oh, no doubt about it. And you go back and watch that play. Uh, again, all these games will be archived on YouTube. As soon as this game is over, go back and watch it whenever you want to. But also, when you look at the coaching staff and the players, when they watched that play on film, that was such a well-executed play. That was a read option play, which Tyson Bajan, and I believe it was Deontay Glover in the backfield at that time, but don't quote me on that. It may have been Hebron. It really showed that read option very well that it was going to be a running play. And on the outside, it was a... A great job by Dylan Brewer by not necessarily blocking, but showing like he was going to start blocking. Then at the last second, the timing perfect from Bajan pulling back to pass and Brewer hitting on the Jets and having a seam right at the middle on that amazing post drive. It was really a beautiful play. Here we go. Key to the second half right here, opening possession, because you'll remember the Shepherd Rams won the coin toss and they opted to go for what? Uh, the second half kick and put their defense out to start the game. So now with the momentum, including that field goal from 38 yards on the final play of the first half, if the Rams could get points with this opening possession of the second half, it could go a long way towards maybe putting this one in the win column. And they just got to play a second half of football. Yep. We've got to see that this year. We talk about how their offense has struggled uh, going into opponents' territory. Their offense has struggled even more just as a whole in half number two. So they need to uh, play a whole game here and play a solid second half of football. And that starts right now with the kick underway. Yep, Metzger with a long, deep kick. Going to send Brown a couple of yards deep into the end zone. He's going to bring it out across the far side, 10, 15, He's 20. Got he gets off. a little opening and has his feet taken out from underneath of him, falling forward to the 30-yard line. Man, man, I'll tell you what, Ronnie Brown had a seam up that far sideline, didn't he? He did. Did not see who came diving in there, but that may have been a touchdown saving tackle. Whew. Man, you could see that hole open up on that far side in between the numbers and the sideline, and I think Ronnie Brown saw it as well as he tried to hit those jets, but somebody's hands down there just getting and getting them at the ankles, and that could have been a big play to start this second half. Deontay Glover in the backfield as the tailback to the left side of the quarterback, Tyson Bajan. Two receivers here to the left side of the formation. 
Snap back and the handoff to Glover. Glover looking for running room to the right. Put a hand down to maintain his balance and pick up an extra couple of yards. Mark him to the 34. So a four-yard gain, and you knew that the Rams would come out, and they've got to try to establish a little bit of a ground game, at least a little bit of one after just 28 yards on nine carries in the first half. Yeah, and in the first half, it didn't really have the feel that they tried to establish one. It was a lot of quick drives and a really no-huddle two-minute drive. You're not going to run the ball an awful lot at the end of the half. A good pass here. Dylan Brewer has it coming up that near side across the 40-yard line. That's going to be enough for a first down Shepard. Yeah, nice little dump off as Dylan Brewer finds a space in front of those linebackers cutting across the field from the far side to the near side. Makes that catch and turns it up. He got out to the 42. So that gained good for eight and a Ram first down. That would be their 14th of the afternoon. Bajan out of the gun. Taking that snap, looking here to the near side, letting it go, and that is Pulse with the catch, wrestled down right at the midfield stripe there to make that tackle, the defensive back Cameron Sutherland. And Josh Pulse, the redshirt freshman, 6'3", 205, went to Walkersville High School, and that was a great throw by Tyson Bajant. That throw was coming even before Pulse made that turn to come back and get it on the curl. It was great timing and a great throw by Bajant. Second down and two. Bajan handing that one off. Glover looking for running room near side. A little bit of a hesitation move. Then tries to hit that hole. Grabbed down low by Glover Sam Ferrari, who got some help up high to bring down Glover after, after a two-yard gain and enough for the first. First and ten, Shepard. So the Rams with a couple of first downs now on this opening possession of the second half from the 48 of the Golden Eagles. Glover up to 14 yards now on five carries. How about 18 of 24 passing for 242 yards for Bajan. Bajan will bring a man in motion, give that little touch pass to Dylan Brewer. Brewer cutting up field again, breaking through a couple of would-be tackles. Adds an extra two yards to that one down to the 43. Mark that as a six-yard gain. And that is where Shepard has missed Rodney Dorsey from week one. And he was the specialist for that play in week one. Again, it's really just a redirection of the football. Uh, Bajan just bats it down into the arms of the receiver coming in motion. And Dorsey in week one did it a couple times. It was really effective in doing so, but a good job there by Brewer to do it as well. On second and five, Bajan dumps it off underneath. Grab is made by Brown out of the backfield. Gets rid of a defender at the 30. Down the near sideline to the 20 and the 10. Pushed at the five, diving for the pylon. And they're going to mark him out of bounds at the three. But there is a penalty marker down on the play. And it's holding against the Rams. Tyson Bajan looks like he may have taken a little bit of a hit at the end of that play, kind of bent over there near that penalty marker. Yeah, that holding going to be on right tackle Joseph Fisher, the 6'5 freshman from Clear Springs in Hagerstown. And that was a, that was a good call by the officials. Six penalties for 50 yards now whistled against the Shepard. They'll move that football. Back to the 47-yard line in Ram territory. And it will bring up a second down and 15. So instead of a first down and goal situation, the Rams are still on their side of the field. And hold on, penalty marker is down. And the Rams may have had too many players in the huddle. They really didn't huddle. That's the question. They've got 11 guys on the field right now. A Ram receiver. Play. Second down. Yep, a Ram receiver was going off the field. Now DJ Cornish coming from the sideline. Yep, 11 players on the field right now. Cornish going to line up as a Second tight end to the left of the formation with Alex Wetzel as a slot out beyond him. I guess more of a wing now with no receiver this way. Yeah, You've got a slot more of a wing. Slot and a wide out to the other side. Bajan to throw, steps up in the pocket, throws near side too high for Alex Wetzel over his outstretched arm and out of bounds. I think that's a case where Bajan watching Wetzel all the way there, and the defense was drawing in towards Wetzel. He had D.J. Cornish on this near side hash mark at about the 26-yard line wide open. I don't think his eyes ever read and went through the progressions right there. 
Brings up a third and 15. The Rams two of five on third down conversions in that first half. Need to get this one here. They've got a couple of first downs in this possession. Hate to see it stall at midfield. From their own 47, two receivers each way. Time to throw for Bajan over the middle, and that is Devin Phelps, who makes the grab at the 40-yard line, but he's not going to have what he needed for the first. Yeah, I think that's too far to be four down territory. Play the, the game of field position when you're up by 13, and that's exactly what's going to happen. Pole coming on to punt. 13 yards on that pass completion. Bajan's up to 261. And now just two of six on third down conversions. Love to be able to see Phelps go down the field just another two steps to be able to pick that first down up. So Noah Pohl to punt it away. Pohl in that first half had one punt for 35 yards, and that pinned the Clarion team back inside of their own 10 at the 7 yard line. Let's see what he does here. The scrimmage from the 40 and the punt away. Low line drive bouncing at the 10, taking a quick skip towards the goal line. Saved from going into the end zone by a hustling Justin Cole, the senior defensive back, and the Rams are able to down it inside the one. I guess he could have gotten a little closer to the goal line. Not no, much. That's a, that's a phenomenal yeah, punt, and I, I think line. Paul should have been the special teams player of the week last week with uh, what he did punting at Mercyhurst, pinning Mercyhurst deep in their own territory. I believe four punts inside the 15-yard line, not just the 20, uh, but he's having a very good game so far. Yeah, having a very good game so far today, making sure they weren't changing that to a touchback as we got an explanation from our officiating crew. So from inside of their own one-yard line, Clarion's first possession of this second half. Jeff Clemens, the redshirt senior quarterback, will lead him out. Joining him in the backfield is Mylake McGriff, the junior running back there, leading rusher on the season. High formation and look for that handoff. And there it is, and McGriff looking for running room over top of the left side of his line. Picks up a half a yard at best. He really got back to the line of scrimmage, maybe completely out to the one. We'll say no gain. It'll be second and ten still from the one-yard line. And a good job at the bottom of that pile by Ricky Robinson. Uh, just had McGriff by the ankle and wasn't letting him go. That allowed the rest of the defensive line and the linebacking core to come up and finish the job off. But he had both hands around that ankle. And somebody else got him right in the middle of the 33 on the back of the jersey. You could see the back of that jersey kind of pulling away as well. On second down and 10, the Rams showing blitz. Here they come, play action pass. Clemens throwing deep along the far side. Nobody's there, and it sails out of bounds. His receiver had cut out. The pass went further down the field, and the closest one there was the Ram defensive back, Chris Jones. Yeah, Clemens taking a pretty good shot on that one. He's laboring a little bit, getting up. You can tell that one knocked the wind out of him a little bit, hands on the hip, just trying to get some air back in the lungs. Third down and a 10 from their own one-yard line. Two of five on third down conversions in that first half for Clarion. A crucial third down here, and Clemens will go ahead and line up in the shotgun. McGriff to his left side. Three receivers here to the wide side right. The snap is back. The throw to that far side and incomplete. And again, it's the pressure on the quarterback that forced that Aaron throw as he tried to get it to a wide receiver over on that far side. That looks to be number nine, uh, Khalik Muhammad. Yeah, Muhammad looked like he quit on that route at the end. That ball, um, again, we're for on a, a from probably the worst angle to see where that ball was right now, kind of diagonal from us on the far side. But when he ran that out route, it seemed like it wasn't a very sharp cut, and it seemed like he was uh, not expecting that ball to come his way. Quit on that route. Not saying that that ball would have been inbounds enough for him to make a play, but it uh, certainly looked like he uh, downshifted a little on that one. Metzger had two punts, an average of 49 yards in that first half, a long of 61 from the back of his own end zone. Just gets it out of there, a low line drive, and Lewis is going to grab it at the 42-yard line. Working towards the middle of the field, gets around the defender, cut back move as a flag comes down, and down goes Lewis at the 36. That's going to be a block in the back on number eight. I believe that's going to be on. Lewis on the return. There are flags on the play. On the Equair. Oh, boy. 9.31 to play here in quarter number three. 
The Rams will get the football with good field position, but could have really been great field position Number if it weren't yard. for the penalty. Illegal block in the back. Receiving team number eight. Ten-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down, Shepard. Officials time out for a water break. The PSAC has implemented a water break. Therefore, we're going to take that opportunity to give them a water break. Time out. Listen, there you listen go. to the boss. Let's grab some water ourselves, a 60-second break, and then we will return to Memorial Stadium. 9.31 left in quarter number three. The Rams will have the football when we come back, leading Clarion 23-10. to 10. for what's next or to plan ahead. We're here. Brown Funeral Home, a legacy of service since 1880. With four new car dealerships and four used car dealerships in three states, Parsons is the largest used car and fastest growing new car dealer in the tri-state area. Take Parsons Ford with huge savings on hundreds of new Fords, financing from 0%, Parsons' goal of financing for all, and Parsons' famous above-market trade-in allowances that help make Parsons number one for used cars, too. See why so many won't buy anywhere but Parsons Ford in Martinsburg. We became number one by making you number one first. Parsons. Well, the water break wrapping up, and, and now Shepard coming out to take over the football. They are at the 46-yard line in Clarion Territory, leading 23-10, to 9.31 to play in our third quarter. Second possession of the second half, an empty backfield for Bajan, slings it out near side, grab is made on that catch for Shepard. Number 20, Michael Freeman in the junior wideout, able to work his way inside the 40 to the 39 for a pickup of seven. And that's a name I'm not sure we've called yet this year. Yeah, a couple of times they have targeted him. As I look back through the totals, Freeman did have uh, one reception for six yards earlier in the year. So from the 39, a second down and three. Bajan up to 268 passing yards, 21 of 28 on the afternoon. Three touchdowns coming in that first half. Again, an empty backfield. Three receivers out to the right, two here to the left. Bajan taking that shotgun snap. Steps up in the pocket, gives a little pump fake. Penalty marker is down. Bajan diving forward, has the first down to the 35-yard line. But now we're going to check the penalty marker. There is a flag on the play. And that looks in the area of a defensive holding or an offsides based on where that penalty flag was thrown. Yeah, that is an offsides. Defense number 99. That penalty is declined. Result of the play, first down. So the Rams take the result of the play. That will move that football down to the 35-yard line. So Bajant picking up that first down. Unofficially 16 first downs now for Shepard. Bajan in that first half carried the ball a couple of times for minus a yard. Bajan going to hand it off to Deontay Glover, looking to turn the corner on that right side as his feet taken out from under him by the safety, Sam Ferrari. Yeah, that's just like the car. Not spelled the same, though. No, slightly different, but pronounced the same. Mark it down to the 31. That's a gain of four, a second and six coming. Glover's up to 18 yards on six carries. Been hard to get that ground game going today. Bajant, meanwhile, after picking up four yards and a ram first down on that prior carry, he's got three yards on three carries. On second and six, Glover in the backfield, this time taking that handoff straight ahead, bowling his way down, close to the 25. He should have the first down before he was driven backwards. That'll be a gain of six, and it will be a Ram first down, 17th of the afternoon, and already their fourth here in this third quarter. 740 and counting. As the Rams doing a nice job controlling the clock here so far in this second half. Doing a very good job of that, and right now they're in their mystery part of the field, <laughs> if that's what you want to call it. But uh, this is where drives seem to stop, but 
And they have a first down and 10 here. See if they can continue to move that ball towards the goal line, get in the red zone. This is the area they've struggled with this year. And a wide open receiver. It's Glover with it. He's in the end zone for a Shepard Ram touchdown. John Day Glover for the Shepard touchdown. To see Glover come out of the backfield in motion, sprint over to the near side, and then lined up as a wide receiver and then turned and went down the field. It's the identical play they ran just to the opposite side. And yep. It, and it's a flip play, but it's the exact same play, both of them on the left side of the field. And I believe we're going to have a uh, after the touchdown penalty. So the it looks like the call will stand, but we'll see who the penalty's on here. Sure, it will be marked on the kickoff. They're checking with the near Clarion sideline, so it may be against the Rams, perhaps. A celebration. After a touchdown was over, unsportsmanlike conduct, offense number taunting. That 15 yard penalty would be a You get that mad offense touchdown. number taunting. Well, now attempt to try. I, I, I did get some of that. It's got to be on at nine. I mean, Deontay Glover was the only player in the end zone. So Hayden August Scriven on to attempt the extra point. The penalty will be marked on the kickoff. August Scriven did have a PAT blocked on the very first touchdown of the day for Shepard. Snap is back and the hold down. That kick is up and through, and we'll take a break with 7-14 remaining in quarter number three. And Shepard now out in front of Clarion, 30-10. to 10. For those of you who played. Hi, this is Eric from Hagerstown Ford. I keep telling you that Hagerstown Ford has completely changed the car buying experience forever. And with a return policy easier than Walmart, Hagerstown Ford has a goal to deliver 350 cars and trucks per month. And when I say deliver, I mean deliver to you where you are, just like Amazon does. And if you don't want it, return it. No questions asked. The only way Hagerstown Ford can accomplish this extremely aggressive goal is to make the car buying process fast and easy. We simply refuse to play the dumb back and forth games that most dealerships want to play. There's absolutely no reason for you to waste your precious time at a car dealership. I assure you, there is no dealership from Winchester, Virginia to Washington, D.C. that can beat our price. There's no dealership that will allow you to return your new car if you don't want it. Hagerstown Ford absolutely has the best price, and we'll bring the car to you. And if you don't want it, return it, period. No questions asked. There's no reason to buy anywhere else. Visit HagerstownFord.com to schedule your VIP experience and get your new ride delivered to you. Contact dealer for details. Now the kickoff is going to come from all the way back at the 20-yard line as Shepard loses 15 yards on this kickoff as a result of the taunting penalty. And for Shepard, that is now eight penalties, 75 yards today. And that means Clarion could get some pretty decent field position. We'll give you that scoring drive summary in a moment. Brought to you by Mike Folk for Governor. Find out more online at Folk, the number four, WV. Dot com, the former Shepherd Ram, Mike Folk. High end over end kick, taken along the near side numbers of the 18. That's Ford, the wide receiver on the return, getting up across the 35 and the 40. Ran into a pair of Ram special teamers who take him down at the 41. For Shepard, it was a five-play, 46-yard drive, two minutes and 17 seconds. 25 yards on that touchdown pass from Bajent to Glover. Second time today, those two have connected. That is nine touchdown passes now on the season for Tyson Bajent. I got him 22 of 29, 293 yards. Not too shabby of a day. And, Matt, this is a number I mentioned in the pregame show, but if the Rams offense scores 24 points in a ball game, they are 326 and 18. That's winning 95% of those ball games. So I don't want to say this one is a done deal, but it might as well be at this point with how they've done with 24 points in a ball game. From their own 42-yard line, back out there is Michael Proyos, and he slings the pass out near side to Quinn Zenoble, and Zenoble quickly forced out of bounds after a three-yard gain. So we see the quarterback change from one possession to the next possession. Four of seven passing now. For Proyos, he has thrown for 35 yards. A second down and seven coming from their own 45. The Rams looking like they're bringing pressure, and they do. Proyos to throw along that far side, really down the middle of the field towards the hash marks, and there is a penalty marker down, and it might be either pass interference or holding. Gonna be. That looked to be intended for Dana Jackson, Jr., the wideout. Penalty going to be on Corey Shell, regardless of what it is. Right now on the... Secondary, you have 
a black one, Harbert saying that ball was uncatchable. It is pass interference. I believe the ball is uncatchable because of the pass interference. First down. Nine penalties, 90 yards now on Shepard. And that moves the football to the 40-yard line in Ram territory. First down and a 10, and that would be the 12th first down of the day now for Clarion, and this one comes as a result of the penalty. They were three plays and out on their inaugural possession of this second half. Proyos out of the gun, awaiting that shotgun snap. McGriff out there with him. There is the handoff, and McGriff coming right, wrapped up, and pretty quickly taken down at the bottom of the pile. David Eppert, the linebacker, the first to really grab a hold of him. They do mark his progress for a pickup of two down to that Ram 38. Summer Griff going for what was his first read, then trying to bounce it outside. And and nothing doing on the outside either. There's nowhere to go with that football. Shepard's run defense has really stepped up in the first two series of this ballgame. 50 yards, though, on 12 carries. McGriff has run better than anybody so far against this Ram defense. On a second down and eight from the Shepard 38. Under six minutes on a running third quarter clock. Proyos taking that shotgun snap. Little uh, run option, and he's going to keep it coming near side and goes out of bounds inside the 30. Looks like they'll mark his progress at about the 27-yard line. Mike Blackman Harbor pushing him out there. No contact made, but at least forcing him to the sideline. But they're going to be enough for a Clarion first down. And I think this is the deepest they've been in Shepherd territory in a long time in this ballgame. Down to that 27 of the Rams. First down and 10. Poyos has got to run more. He's got two carries, 29 yards. Had a run like that for 18 in the first half. Picked up 11 there. On first down, slot receiver in motion to the near side. They'll fake the handoff. Royos keeps it and gets quickly taken down by the Ram defensive end, David Wilson. The junior 6'2", 235 out of Archbishop Curley in Baltimore making that tackle. Second down and nine. Amante Vaught looks like he was shaken up a little bit on the play to his feet now, but still favoring that left leg a little bit. Second down and nine coming. The Rams making some defensive substitutions. Had linebacker in along that defensive front. Empty backfield behind the quarterback. Proyos, the redshirt freshman, looking over the defense with three receivers to his left. He's got two here to the right. Sets up in the pocket, throws over the middle and intercepted. That is Antonio Fox who missed the first half after a targeting penalty last week. He's in in this second half, picked it off at the 10, gets to the near side numbers, Antonio and returns Fox it out close to the 32-yard line. Well, welcome back, Antonio Fox. That's a good way to make your presence felt coming back into the ball game after missing about uh, what looks like three quarters of football, the fourth quarter against Mercyhurst, and the first half of this one, a great interception. The Clarion bench wanted pass interference. I thought it was a good football play by Fox, just making a play on the football, not necessarily going over top of the receiver. Great play and another turnover for this Shepherd Ram defense after zero coming into today's game. About three, and all three have been interceptions, three different players picking off passes in this one. From their own 33, as they set it down, it's Ram football first and 10, leading 30 to 10. 431 left in the third. Wing back here to the left, pass going far side. Making that grab is Dudney, and very quickly hit and driven backwards and taken down on the play. Appeared to be Corey Wells, a redshirt junior defensive back with the stop. And Matt, on this drive, Shepard needs to take this drive into the fourth quarter. I think that would be big, not only to take some time off, but they need to put the dagger in here. I think this is a message-sending drive opportunity for Shepard to make it a 27-point game possibly and really just kind of... Like I said, put the dagger in this ball game. And say, hey, uh, we're a real football team this year. Second down and seven. The handoff going to Ty Hebron and a Hebron great push care. that time by the right side of that offensive line as Hebron goes out to the 44-yard line. That gain is good for a Ram first down. Eight yards on that carry. I've got 19 Ram first downs on the afternoon. 
Man in motion coming near side. That's Dylan Brewer. Pistol formation as Bajan awaits the snap. Hands it off. Hebron this time over the left side of the line, picking up just about four yards. Hebron again with the carry. So the Rams going back to the ground game a little bit, trying to establish Ball something there. Hebron out. in that first half had two carries for yard six line. yards. He's had two here in the second half, adding 12 more. And I think Shepard is wearing down that front seven of Clarion right now. Those defensive linemen coming up huffing and puffing after every play, putting the hands on the hips. And the battle of the trenches right now, I think right now those big men for Shepard are winning that battle. See what happens here. 249 and counting on that third quarter clock. See if they run it again. Ronnie Brown to the left of Bajan. Back to throw. Bajan lets it go far side. That catch is made, and the wide receiver is Brian Walker. He's a sophomore tight end. His first catch, and he is going to go out of bounds just shy of the first down. But does stay in bounds, which I think is big. I know still in the third quarter with Shepard with a 20-point lead right now. I think you have to keep that clock running, and Again, just prolong this drive and ideally take it into the fourth quarters where two, the 13 and counting now. Third down and one. Shepard two of six on third down conversions. Pistol formation. McCook going to be a lead blocker and trying to slip through the hole and going down pretty quickly was Brown. And it's all going to depend on the spot. Ronnie Brown looked like he had an opening but could not squeeze through. Yeah, he was short. His knee came down, and he, his body actually came down sideways. It didn't land going north and south, where if he had, probably would have been a first down. And, yeah, I think this is a no-brainer right here for Coach McCook. Got to go for it in this situation. Only got to get about six inches. And it looks like Bajan is going to go up under center. I love this call right here. Quarterback sneak to the right side, and Bajan's got it. There it is. Quarterback keeper. The quarterback keeper gets inside the 45. They'll mark him at the 44. That'll be a pickup of three for Bajan and a Ram first down. I mentioned this in the first half. I just never understood in a fourth and short. I get if you're a shotgun formation team like Shepard is, but on a fourth and one, there's no reason to take the ball six yards behind the line of scrimmage. Every fourth down and one, fourth down and two should be just like that, and you're taking the ball and just getting those two yards you need. Now under a minute to play in our third quarter, 30 to 10, Shepard on first and 10, Bajan to throw, far side catch made, receiver fighting for some extra yards, that's Pulse who will get to the 32, they'll say he stepped out there after a 12 yard gain. And Pulse showing some authority after that play, staying on his feet and they're forcing the defender onto Ball his back out of bounds. 32-yard line, first and 10, Shepard. 21 first downs unofficially for the Rams. 25 of 32 passing. I now have 313 yards for Bajan. And he may continue to lead the nation in passing after this one. Came in first in the nation in total passing yards and passing yards per game through the first two weeks. On first down, man in motion to the far side is McCook, the fullback. Pass to that far side, and I believe that's Pulse again. No, that's Brown who Brown brought that one in, the and the running back very quickly is brought down, helping to lead the charge with Sam Ferrari. Loss on the play back to the 36-yard line. So that one will be a loss of four. Maybe the final play of quarter number three, and it is as the that's clock has quarter. struck zeros. Don't go away. We're back with your fourth quarter of action Here's from here in Clarion, Pennsylvania, three. with Shepard leading Clarion 30 Clarion. to 10. Hello, I'm Michael Falk, a lifelong resident of West Virginia, husband and father. I worked my way through school and life with honesty, hard work, and determination. These principles have served me well in athletics, education, farming, and aviation, and have carried me through years of fighting for a more accountable government at the local and state level. These same core principles will allow me to serve you well in Charleston. I believe true leadership is sticking your neck out for right, even when it goes against the establishment. You can help me put principle over politics and beat the odds one more time. My name is Monica. I'm an elementary school teacher. My name is Mitch. I'm a graphic design specialist. We have four children. Currently we have life and auto insurance with Erie. Our agent is helping us to move our homeowner's insurance to Erie as well. They've always been a good company and good customer service. If anything ever happens to me, my family will be protected. Your local Erie agent in Martinsburg is Smallwood and Small Insurance. Get a quote at smallwoodandsmall.com. 
Along with Matt Crawford, I'm Matt Miller, Caleb Falero, our engineer at the studio, Eric Sterick, and John Alderton, our on-site producers and cameramen, as we bring you Shepherd Ram football on TV10 and WRNR-TV on YouTube. Looking forward to getting home next week, homecoming at Rams Stadium. Get out and support the Shepherd Rams as they take on Cutstown for Clarion. They'll hit the road after two straight home games. They go to Gannon next week. Also Heading into quarter number four, 30 to 10, and Shepard in front, and the Rams from the Clarion 36 will face a second down and 14. Two receivers make it three receivers out there to that left side. Play action pass, and Bajan rolling, going to loft that one towards Dylan Brewer, diving for it inside the 10-yard line. Just couldn't get to it. It's incomplete. Yeah, and that's a tough play for Tyson Bajan to make, and it was a good route, a run on the corner route by Dylan Brewer, just a little too far out in front of him, and it was a backdoor waggle by Tyson Bajan as he did the play action to this near side, and just a tough play to have to turn his entire body and throw. Still a young quarterback. He started all year last year as a true freshman, but I don't know, at least for me, I have to keep reminding myself, he is just a sophomore in game number three, uh, but he is really living above expectations so far this year. On a third down and 14, Bajan wants to throw, flush from the pocket, rolling near side, looking, looking, now lets it go. Grab made right on the sideline by Brian Walker, and nope, they'll roll it incomplete. Penalty marker down on that far side. I think the defense was offside. I was going to I, I agree with you, but I don't know why the uh, the line judge wouldn't have made the call looking right down the line of scrimmage. It came from a odd official, but yeah, that is the right call. I'm with you. The uh, the nose tackle spun right before the ball was snapped and went from lined up right over the center to lined up right over that left guard. And when he spun, he was lined up in the neutral zone. Ten penalties, 67 yards now on Clarion. Their first penalty of the second half. But it moves the football down to the 31 and brings up now a third down and nine. So after making a stop there, they've got to try to make another third down stop. Bajan out of the gun will have Glover to his left. Snap is back and Bajan throwing far side and has Dylan Brewer who makes the catch inside the 20 and goes down at the 18 yard line. Nice throw for 13 yards. Bajant now up to 322 yards. I've got him 27 of 35. Boy, that's a long throw out to that wide side. Yeah, and it's the plays like that that you have to remind yourself that he is just a sophomore, and that is not a, a average play that a lot of sophomores in Division II college football are going to make. And he is proving that he's going to be a special. He is a special quarterback yeah. already, but you give him another two years in this offense, I think you're talking maybe one or two Harlan Hill finalist awards. First down and 10 now from the Clarion 18. 14 8 on a running fourth quarter clock, a 30-10. Ram lead and looking for more and a penalty marker down. Maybe delay. Yes, it is. Uh, the Rams couldn't quite get that play in. So minus five. And now for Shepard, I've got 10 penalties for 95 yards on the day. Both of these teams laboring a little bit with the penalty situation. 20 combined penalties for what looks to be, what, 162 yards. I've seen cleaner played games. First down and 15 now with the ball back around the 23-yard line. Bajan to throw far side. Knocked away in the end zone. Incomplete. Trying to get that one to Dudney, but broken up by Ferrari. And Sam Ferrari coming over the top at safety. He's a guy that coming into this game at 12 tackles and has really been one of the uh, cornerstones of this uh, defense. And he's shown that today. He's come up with a couple of big pass deflections. Second down and 15. Ball at the 23 of Clarion. Clock stopping after the incompletion. Two receivers here to this wide side right. Single receiver to the left. Snap is back. Some time in the pocket, now stepping up, throwing over the middle, has the open receiver, grab is made, dragging a tackler inside the 10, down close to the 8-yard line. Once again, Brian Walker. Walker. Boy, the sophomore listed as a tight end has come out of nowhere here in game three of the season. Yeah, Alex, he and Alex Wetzel could be twins, or at least body twins it looks like. Uh, Walker maybe a few extra inches on Wetzel, but both of them are just that dynamic big body right across the middle, and 
Uh, Walker proving why he should get a lot of these reps along with Alex Wetzel. So that was a gain of 14 as they set it down at the nine-yard line, and it brings up a third down and one. Pistol formation, McCook, an H-back goes in motion. It'll be a lead blocker as the handoff goes to Deontay Glover, and it looks like he's got that first down. He should be down between the eight and the seven-yard line, which would be enough. Yep, there is the indication it's a Ram first down. I got 23 first downs today now for Shepard. And Deontay Glover's got to put that football high and tight. He's going to the ground, and I think that football is pretty close to coming loose. Give him a one-yard gain. I've got him at eight carries, 25 yards. It has not been easy to get that ground game going today for the Rams. Pistol formation again for Tyson Bajan. Awaiting that shotgun snap. He's got it on the play action rolling far side. Let's that one go. Back of the end zone. Dylan Brewer can't quite pull it in. I'm not sure he got a foot in bounds even if he catches it. I thought that was a play that, again, it's that backside bootleg. And that was a play where I think with two receivers that could turn into blockers in the end zone, Tyson could have tucked that ball and run. May have not been able to get into the end zone, but I think definitely inside the five right there. I'd like to see him uh, tuck that and run in those kind of situations. Has the ability to, but we just don't see it on those kind of plays all that often. It's almost a, it's going to be a scheduled run or a read option. If not, he's not going to tuck it and run. 15th play of this Ram drive and Bajan to throw, fade, backside, catch made. That's Dudney who will make the reception. Penalty marker down and it's offensive hey, pass interference. Yeah, I had a feeling that was going to be offensive pass interference. The, the defender offensive facing the football and when that flag came out, kind of hard to be defensive pass interference when uh, the defender's hands are facing away from the offensive player. 11 penalties, 110 yards, the unofficial total now on Shepard. As that will back that football up, it had been at the 8-yard line, but they'll move it back to the 23 of Clarion, where it will be second and goal to go. 12-18 on a fourth quarter clock. The Rams started this possession with 431 left in quarter number three. And they've eaten almost three full minutes off of this fourth quarter clock. So they're nearing seven and a half minutes on this possession. Good, good drive. It's a drive that they needed to have. Again, I think this is a message-sending drive. And you'd love to see it capped off with a touchdown here. Shotgun snap to Bajan. Flush from the pocket. Avoids one tackler and then gives a little flip to Deontay Glover. Picking up three yards as he's brought down at the 20-yard line. To Glover. Short gain on a play. believe that's a 3-5 on that tackle. That would be Jordan Smith, the redshirt freshman linebacker. Third and goal. Oh, nice play to pick up some positive yards when it looked like he would be sacked for a loss. Under 12 minutes now here in the final quarter of action. Shepard, 30-10, the lead over Clarion. Shepard hoping to improve to 2-1 and one on the season. Clarion hoping to improve to 3-0 and oh for the first time since they started 7-0 and oh back in 2015. They would lose the final four games of that season to finish 7-4. and four. Bajan on the play action, wants to throw, lets it go, and Devin Phelps juggles and drops the football inside the 10-yard line. Uh, Phelps made that initial cut and tripped a little bit, was able to keep his balance and uh, pop back up and put himself in position to make the catch, but I'm not really sure had his balance completely when he went up to go and make the catch on that football. Would have been short regardless. Again, he's dealing with some lower body injuries and not just one. That's why I'm kind of generalizing saying lower body. Now there's some, some hip and knee stuff going on with him, so you hope he can get healthy, but you just haven't seen the explosion from him with the speed that you've seen in weeks one and two. Hayden August Scriven with a 38-yard field goal on the final play of the first half. Tries from 37 here, and that kick is up, and that kick is good. Hayden August Scriven with a pair of field goals on the afternoon, lifting that Shepherd Ram lead out to 33-10. to We'll take a 60-second break. 11.30 left in this one. It is Shepherd Rams football on TV 10. 
Let's talk trash, because when it comes to trash, you have options. Panhandle Dumpsters is a local family-owned garbage hauling company serving both residential and commercial customers with weekly trash pickup, dumpster service, yard waste pickup, and ball pickups, too. Panhandle Dumpsters will give you a free trash can and provide curbside service for just $23 a month. Panhandle Dumpsters features a fleet of quieter, eco-friendly garbage trucks, thereby reducing the noise usually associated with pickup. Switch now and save up to 30%. Call 833-DUMP-STR, panhandledumpsters.com. If you hang the WVU medicine sign, it certainly has helped take us to another level. He literally, literally saved my life. It's just mind-boggling to me that he was able to do what he did. We're able to affect much more of a difference for our patients with these resources. Having people treated locally uh, enhances their overall care. They treat you great and they're down to earth in the West Virginia way that all West Virginians treat each other. That scoring drive for Shepard, 17 plays, 47 yards, 8 minutes and 1 second. A 37-yard field goal for Hayden August Scriven, his second of the day in the Ram lead. is now 33-10. to 10. Drive summary brought to you by Mike Folk for Governor Accountable, Ethical, Responsible. August Scriven with the ensuing kickoff. There it goes into the far back corner of the end zone and out of the back of the end zone and that will be a touchback so Clarion will come out for just their third possession of the second half with 11:30 left in this one starting at their own 25 Matt they went three plays and out punted on their first possession and after getting a first down on a pass interference penalty through their third interception of the game on the fifth play of their second possession. After that, the Rams go on that eight-minute drive, and now Clarion's offense finally comes back out again. Yeah, and after those first two drives of the ball game, where they look like they were moving the football pretty good, and you're going, all right, maybe this 2-0 Clarion team that's put up 48 points in back-to-back -back weeks is the real deal. And since then, they really have just struggled to do anything, throwing the football, running the football, just moving the football any way possible. Proyos back out there at quarterback, handing that one off to McGriff, and he's brought down right at the line of scrimmage. Helping to make that tackle for the Rams, one of those interior linemen, that is okay, Karon Lewis, it looks like. Yeah, 66. He's been moved from the offensive side to the defensive side of the line. And in there to make that tackle, Chris Lane helping out as well, second and 10. We heard from defensive coordinator Josh Klein. There's quite a few of the younger guys that have been moved from offensive line where they're recruited to that defensive line and are learning the ropes as this season has gone on. Proyos to McGriff in the flat on this left side. Coming up quickly was Hassan Marshall to make that tackle. They do get a gain of one out to the 26, and Clarion will face third down and nine. Proyos now five of nine, but just 36 yards. They do not have much in the yardage category here in this second half after mustering up 155 yards in that first half. On third down and long, Proyos wants to throw, has some time over the middle, and intercepted. Not sure if he was expecting the receiver to make a cut, but that throw was right towards Antonio Fox, who made the diving grab for his second pick of the day, and for the Rams, their fourth pick. And I think that is a serious injury to the quarterback for Clarence. He got absolutely rocked after that throw. And the way that the medical staff just ran onto the field, he got absolutely clobbered. Great interception by Antonio Fox. You mentioned second of the game. Uh, let's talk second of the second half. Yeah. He didn't play in that first half, but just hoping that the gunslinger for Clarion is okay. He took a major hit on that one. Well, and perhaps the hit is what caused that pass to maybe go where he was not intending because his receiver not really near that football at all. As Fox, the closest to it, able to make that diving INT. And uh, Proyos is to his feet, although what you might call gingerly. Yeah, he is. Looks like he's either in a lot of pain or just still trying to get his, his wits about him. He took a shot on that hit. And that was after, I'm try, I, I didn't quite get a number on who came around that corner. It looked like a number 45 
if that is correct. And that would be Kyle Smith, I believe it was, coming around that near side to us. And he was held, it blatantly held. There was no penalty on the play, but was able to fight through the hold and just absolutely come in and level Proyos. He is to his feet, and the quarterback walks off under his own power. And the Ram offense comes out onto the field at the 33-yard line of Clarion. And still 10-20 remaining in this ball game. One, two, three, eight. Eleven offensive plays in the second half hit for Clarion, while Shepard has already run almost 30 plays. On first and 10 from the Golden Eagle 33, Bajan fires that screen pass near side intended for Dudney, but that pass is incomplete and a very late penalty marker coming down and I think they're gonna get Dudney as he kind of yanked on the arm of a defender who was uh, stumbling over top of him at the end of the play. I think that's one could have easily been let go in this given situation. But nonetheless, it's one that if your head coach, Ernie McCook, and his staff, you've got to tell your guys, can't have it. Complete pass after the play is over. Unsportsmanlike conduct, offense number 19. 15-yard penalty. And I'm not sure that's a, a penalty with every officiating crew. But, yeah, it's just it's a play that doesn't need to happen. It's a play that wasn't necessary at this point in the game. So I'm not sure how much. Uh, it's going to be. I'm not sure how much punishment you're going to get for that one uh, with the coaching staff, but I just want that. It is definitely preventable. That's a that's a mental mistake, not a physical mistake. 12 penalties, 125 yards today on Shepard. Got to improve on that. Second and 25 now, as that was a dead ball penalty. The play counts as an incomplete pass from their own 48. Majin out of the gun. Has that snap, looks near side, now far side, and the receiver went down, and the pass goes well over his uh, head, about 20 yards out ahead of Dylan Brewer. It's incomplete. Well, even if Dylan Brewer stayed on his feet, uh, there was a miscommunication there between Tyson Bates and Dylan Brewer because that ball was overthrown by where Brewer was going to come back and would look like a curl to the inside and Bajan was expecting Brewer to just do a fly pattern all the way down to about the 15-yard line. So some miscommunication there between uh, guys that go back even before Bajan uh, took the field here at Shepard. Shepard, 4 of 10 unofficially on third down conversions. See what they do on a third and 25 here, and a penalty marker is down. That comes from our head referee behind the play. Let's get an explanation. Illegal substitution. Offense. The 12th man come onto the field above the numbers and then retrieve back to the sideline. Five-yard penalty, third down. So minus five for the ineligible player being on field or the illegal substitution. 13 penalties, 130 yards. Let's move it back to that Ram, a 47-yard line. What do you got on third and 30? Bajan stepping up in the pocket, lets it go. Brown with a catch with a blocker in front. Gets to the 40-yard line and gets spun down there in Clarion territory. I think that's about as good as you're going to get on a third and 30. I don't think there's really a page in the playbook for that down and distance. I think it's don't turn the ball over and find somebody short. Don't try to force anything. Now that gained good for 13 yards. Bajan up to 352 passing yards. We've got him 30 of 43. The Rams will go ahead and run a fourth down play. Now four of 11 on third downs. Back to throw Bajan along that far side. Phelps has it inside the 20, wrestles away from a defender and heads into the end zone for the touchdown. And Matt, you used the term wrestled away from the, from the defender. And while it was a good move by Devin Phelps, I think that was just really poor tackling. Devin Phelps, a simple spin move back into the center of the field. And it looked like on the coverage uh, was defensive back number 11, Isaiah Batula. And he just didn't form tackle there, just kind of threw his shoulder, hoping Devin Phelps would go down. And Phelps, all he had to do was really stay on his feet. It was a great play by Devin Phelps. Glad to see him get in the end zone once again this season. That's not a touchdown in each game this year. Uh, but that was really just poor tackling. And I think that's a case where uh, the Clarion defense is, is starting to check out of this one. 
snap placement and extra point kick up and good 920 left in this one in Shepherd now out in front of Clarion 40 to 10. Maytag knows extra dirty clothes need extra cleaning power. That's why the power of the extra power button makes Maytag extra powerful. Wow. Dirt doesn't stand a chance against this kind of power. Get a load of this. That laundry is stacked. Not bad, huh? The Maytag extra power button. More muscle to tackle the tough job. Nothing goes better with football than chicken. From Pee Wee to the big boys to the wing T formation, a hearty meal of 12 pieces for just $9 is just what the boys need to be at their best. Oh my, fumbling, bumbling, stumbling. Omaha! <laughs> Rocks 12 pieces of chicken, just $9. Uh, the kick is going to come from the midfield stripe as there was a unsportsmanlike penalty at the end of the extra point attempt for the Rams. A four-play, 33-yard drive. Took them just a minute, 40 yards on the touchdown pass on a fourth down and 17. It goes from Bajant to Phelps. And Bajant, who at the half had three touchdown passes here in this second half, has had a 25-yard scoring strike to Deontay Glover and added another, the 40-yarder now to Phelps, five TD passes today. And I think all the unsportsman likes and the – subpar tackling we've seen recently is a little pooch kick down to the 20-yard line. That one's going to bounce out of bounds again for the second time today. And some extracurriculars on the sideline. I think we're seeing uh, some on frustration on the side of Clarion. And Shepard's just got to be smart and walk away because Clarion is facing adversity for the first time this year. And uh, late in this game, I'm not sure they're handling it very well. Uh, so Shepard's just got to be smart and walk away from any confrontation. That's what Clarion's trying to do right now. It's just force a reaction. Well, let's see whether they're going to mark these as offsetting. You know, one of the penalty flags comes in as a result of the ball going out of bounds. The other will come as to what they want to call at the end for unsportsmanlike. There are two fouls on the play by the kicking team. Free kick out of bounds. No. Clarion is elected to take the ball at the 35-yard line. After the play was over, Unsportsmanlike conduct, kicking team number 30. At 15 yards Explain, down, please. No. Yard line. No, I, I number would number like 30. to go back and see a replay on that, which I don't have the ability to do until after the game when I'll watch it on TV 10 and our WRNR uh, TV page on YouTube. But that was a, a free football, and two guys that came together right on the sideline. There's contact at the end of that play that is perfectly legit and legal, and then he's the one that got shoved out of bounds. I totally disagree with how that call went. It's not going to affect this game, not going to affect Shepard, other than the fact that you put it together with everything else, and that's now like 14 penalties for 145 yards on Shepard. But still, I just disagree with that one completely. Well, now we know it's going to get Matt Miller fired up for the rest of this ball game. And yeah, John Alderton, our cameraman who's standing right next to us today, has got the zoomed-in view, and he's saying, and I thought it was awfully close, but, again, it's hard for us to see with the, uh, with the naked eye, but I thought that was very close to being out of bounds. And just getting some, some final explanations on where that football is going to be. But, yeah, I thought that was very close to being out of bounds, and I think that's what – but it's a free come. football. I'm not a, arguing that it's a free football, that, Matt. That, that's football right there. That is football, and you got to let them dadgum play. If you don't like what's going on as an official, then go to each sideline, tell these head coaches, make sure your guys are calm, and let's go play football. But I just think that's an unnecessary flag right there as you got two guys kind of making a football play. Look, at the end, did they probably say something? Heck, yeah, it's football. <laughs> you know? At the end, was there a little pushing? Uh, like, that doesn't happen on just about every play. Either way, now they're trying to figure out exactly where they want to put the football. Since it went out of bounds, Clarion said they wanted it at the 35. If you then say it's a dead ball penalty, then that ball's got to come out to the 50-yard line. And I think that's what head coach Weibel is saying. Hey, why aren't we getting the ball at midfield? 
And now our head referee is explaining the situation as they want to spot the football. They're just setting it down right now at the 35. That cannot be right. They've already set the football down to play, and the referee and the line judge are over here still talking with the head coach for Clarion. Now one of the other officials finally blows the whistle. And the fans are getting a little unruly. I'm unruly. I was going to say, I understand, and Matt Miller's getting more <laughs> antsy by the second up here. Been standing in the heat too long today. Yeah, I think that bald I was spot say, your on bald the back of my head is nice and red, not quite shiny anymore. A little toasty. <laughs> It has been a warm afternoon here in northwestern Pennsylvania. Just a, a stone's throw away from where we were last week. Well, look, this is a Clarion team preseason pick number seven in the PSAC West. Off to the hot 2-0 start and now succumbing to the Rams in this one, down 40-10 to with 9.20 left. See how the rest of the season goes for this team as they're at Gannon next week as they'll play their first matchup against a West team. They will set the football only at the 35-yard line, and that is where Clarion will have it on first and 10. Clemens to throw over the middle and incomplete. Receiver never really looked back for the football. Yeah, he was running a post pattern up that far hash mark and turned around as the ball was passing him. I think he saw uh, the uh, safety making a play on that football. Yeah, but I'm not sure yet. Khalik Muhammad, the intended receiver. Yeah, I'm not sure that, that he was ever expecting the football to come his way. So it will be a second down and 10 football at the 35 yard line. Clock stop, 916 left. Little breeze picking up. Feels good, to be honest with say, you. I'm not complaining one bit. Back to throw Clemens along this near side, and the catch is made as Quinn Zenoble went up to get it. Took a little hit at the end from Antonio Fox, but was able to hold on, and that is the first down. Yeah, and uh, Quinn Zenoble needs to check the scoreboard and quit mouthing off. Hey, now who's getting fired up? Oh, you, that's the, one of the best plays you've had this entire second half and mouthing off to the secondary. Good job. You, you caught your second pass on the day, and you're down a 40-10. to 10. Play football. Eight, Line up and go beat them on the field. 18 yards on that pass completion. And Fox, I'm sure, not wanting to uh, get called with another targeting, kind of slowed down, made sure he made a good hit. Here's a pass to that far side, and Clemens throws too high and incomplete. Got pressured and knocked down at the end of the play by Kevon Bowman, a redshirt freshman, defensive lineman out of Aberdeen, Maryland. And, Matt, I don't think it was, but can I tell you I'm shocked that Second was not a roughing the passer yes. penalty? But the way he came in, there was contact made a split second after the ball was released. But just the way that play was was ending and Clemens going down, I was very surprised that that was not a roughing the passer penalty. Again, I don't think it should have been, but the way roughing the, the way the quarterbacks are protected now at all levels of football, I was surprised there wasn't a. A yellow hanky thrown on that one. On second down and 10, throw along the near side. High up to get that one is Khalik Muhammad pulling it in from Khalik Jeff Muhammad Clemens. The, the tackle Clarion. coming at the 30-yard line in Ram territory. Takes it to the 30-yard line. And that so is the pickup good down. for 23 yards. That is the second first down in the possession. I've got 15 first downs now so far in this game and pardon me that was not 23 yards but rather 17 on that pass completion let me get it right clemens with a little run pass option McGriff hands this carry. one off mcgriff with the carry moving to about the 27 about three yards on the game under eight minutes down to go in the ball game 755 and counting on a running fourth quarter clock shepherd the 30 point advantage 40 to 10 and uh, coming up here in a few minutes, I'll tell you why this win is so important and an important event on this specific day for Shepherd Ram football. I am intrigued. I want to know more. Pass near side and a juggling catch made by Mohammed, who eventually gets Mohammed taken down by Eppert at the 20-yard line. A seven-yard gain should be good for the first. For yeah, you know, Terrell the Lindsay was in the area to go make a play on that football, but I think he did a good job of making sure he was playing the defender and not playing the football right there, not allowing a long touchdown, waited for the defender to make the play, wrapped him up and, and dropped him, even though it was a first down. I thought that was a, a sound football play at this point in the game. On first down and 10, 
Three receivers out to the wide side right. Nearing seven minutes left in this one. Looked like they wanted to run a little option to the left, but well defended, and the quarterback had to keep it. And Clemens moves for a gain of two to the 18. Yeah, McGriff, I think. That was a good option play, but I think once Clemens went back into the middle, it was going to be too far of a pitch to get to McGriff, who was moving further and further towards the numbers on this near side. Got to get you to explain the significance. I want to get inside five minutes before I do this. Oh, okay. Just checking. I know you don't believe in the broadcasters, Jenks, but I, not usually, no. But I'm, I'm going to keep this one till inside five minutes. Second down and eight. Clemens to throw and over the middle. Is there a penalty yeah. marker down? Yep. Yeah, there is. He oh, yeah. got there before the football. Absolutely. Muhammad again, the intended target, getting there early on that play was Donnell Howard, the sophomore defensive back. He was playing the football. One of the INT made contact too soon. Should be half the distance to the goal penalty, which will put it down to about the nine-yard line. So with half the distance to the goal, good grief, what am I, where am I now? You're, you're in Clarion, Pennsylvania, we're Memorial for, Stadium. 145, so I'm up to like 15 for 154 yards or so, penalty-wise for Shepard. Ah. I actually moved that football all the way down to the five. So it wasn't really a half the distance of the goal. They went ahead and, and kind of marked it right off. So first down and goal to go. McGriff on the carry, and not much there as he ran right into Matt Betterelli. He's a redshirt freshman, and that's an 85. Are there two 85s? i got to look at that roster sheet. Does that look like an 85 who wrapped him up? Yeah, just one. So Betterelli has moved from the offense to the defensive side, yeah, apparently, he's helping to make a, that stop. As a tight end fullback, it's not even offensive no. line, a defensive line. No gain on the play. Second and goal to go with the football at the five. Inside six minutes now. Shepard 40-10 over Clarion, 554 and counting. Here's a snap of the football. Clemens throwing near side and just inside of the goal line near the pie line. The catch is Khalid made Muhammad by Khalid Muhammad, and the Golden Eagles have a touchdown. A pretty nice drive. Tenth possession of the ball game, just their fourth of the second half, and it results in a nine-play touchdown drive. And well, Shepard playing a cushion defense on that drive, you can tell. Not that Coach Klein necessarily wanted to give up a touchdown because, well, if anybody's ever met Josh Klein, he doesn't want to give up a yard. But I think uh, definitely a more conservative defense there. Extra point attempt on the way. Metzger kicks it up and through, and we'll take a 60-second break. Five minutes, 50 seconds remaining in this one, and now the Shepherd lead at 40-17. to They're my closest friends. We've been through a lot together. Seeing our kids off to college, Kelly losing her mom, my 50th birthday, I trust them with so much. So when it came to my finances, I trusted Kelly's referral to her Ameriprise advisor. Beth gives me the comprehensive advice that helps me feel confident my financial future is secure. With the right financial advisor, life can be brilliant. Ameriprise Financial. If you have been injured in an auto accident or due to someone's negligence and you want to know what your rights are, Call Ferretti Law Office at 264-8505 to discuss your claim for free. Attorney Joe Ferretti is prepared to answer your questions and explain your options. Put Joe Ferretti's legal experience and history of proven results in your corner to fight the bullies from the insurance companies. At Ferretti Law Office, we're here to help you win. We'll give you that drive summary for Clarion, brought to you by Mike Folk for Governor, accountable, ethical, responsible. Nine plays, 65 yards, three minutes and 30 seconds, capped with a five-yard touchdown pass going from Jeff Clemens to Kalik Mohammed, second TD catch on the season for Mohammed and the fourth touchdown pass this season for Clemens. 40-17, to 17, the Ram advantage. Metzger with the ensuing kickoff. Nice deep kick, return man going to take it at about the... Two-yard line, and he called for the fair catch, so the Touch football back. will come out, yep, to the 20-yard uh, line, I believe, in that case, not the 25. Yeah, we haven't seen that yet this year. 
a new rule. Was that, was that implemented last year or the year before? I think it was the I year th before. I think it was, too. I think this is the third year. If you call a fair catch on a kickoff, it is the same as a touchback. And, Matt, that does go out to the 25-yard line. It's the same as a regular touchback. All right, so Zane Lewis calling five for that. The and they'll clock. set the game clock to 5 minutes and 50 seconds, so no time should have gone off. A second did go off as he caught that football, and then the whistles blew. Tenth possession of the afternoon for the Shepherd offense. Out in front, 40-17 to 17 from their own 25-yard line. Tyson Bajan out of the gun. As a back behind him, takes that snap and hands it off. Ball carrier over top of the left side of the line. Works out beyond that 30 to about the 31. That'll be a six-yard gain. Who's that Shaquan carry? Shaquan Dyson, I believe. It is. First time we've seen Dyson on a carry today. And Shaquan Dyson, a guy that in the spring game got a, about a third of the carries. And the first game before you really saw Ronnie Brown uh, pick up steam, you saw Shaquan Dyson get a few carries. Really, it didn't do much with the opportunity he was given in that game. And you've seen him get... Uh, even fewer against Mercyhurst, and as you just mentioned, his first carry with a 5 13 and counting in this ball game. Now 12 seconds on that play clock as Tyson Bage and the Shepherd offense taking their time as this yep. game five minutes from being over in Shepherd and proving to 2 and 1. Not snapping until that play clock's down to three seconds. Hand off again to Dyson. Nice opening right up the middle. That Ram offensive line pushing Dyson all the way three. out. Ten yards down the field, Dyson and Dyson four, takes it four, to the 41 for a 10-yard gain. And that is conditioning Shepherd. right there. You can tell that that front line for Clarion is getting worn down. They've only been on the field for two plays now. And you can tell getting up, they're just still staggering around, and Shepard's offensive line right back to the line of scrimmage ready to go inside. Five minutes now, 440, and counting. I've got 25 first downs on the day for this Ram offense from their own 41 third play of the drive. And again, letting that play clock wind down. Under 10 seconds, down to 9, down to 8. Our game clock is at 420 and counting. Under 5 seconds, 4 seconds. Bajan taking that shotgun snap, and Dyson running to his left. Quickly wrestled down on that play by Cameron and Colliers, a redshirt sophomore defensive Dyson back. Whistle's blowing, and I don't see a penalty flag. Oh, Dyson's helmet came off. So he's got to leave for at least one play. Two on the play. Matt, can I interest you in why this date and this win is so important on this date? Yes, I want to know more. Are you, are you sure? Now that we're under wanna, five minutes. I don't want to give you information you don't want to know. No, I, I But I think know. the fans would be curious to know this one. Inquiring minds want to know. September 21st, the Shepherd Rams have played 10 games in the history of their program. And with nine seconds left in the play, I'll, I'll give you... Some more info on September 21st in Ram, hit, Ram history after this play. Handoff going to the tailback. That's Brown who's out there, and he quickly goes down. Knifing in to make that tackle is Iese Vitola. All right, go back to what you were saying. All right, so again, 10 games in Shepherd Ram football history played on September 21st. They are 6-4 and four in those 10 games. Oh, well, why is that so weird? Why does this game mean anything? On the road on September 21st, this will be the Shepherd Rams' first ever win on this date. 0-4 on the road on September 21st in Ram history, and 6-0 and at home. So this is going to be the first win September 21st on the road in Ram history. We'll take it. Bajan out of the gun on a third and nine. The Rams from their own 42, under three minutes left. Bajan to throw over the middle, a little behind the receiver. Did he make the grab? No. Tremendous effort by Josh Pulse as he had to stop and then dive back from where he came from. Got his hands on it but couldn't control. Only 21st. The first game played on September 21st was back in 1956. They win 13-0 at home over Glenville State. And the most recent, it was a win 27-7 in 2013 against Urbana. Punting unit is coming on. Got to go back to that uh, first back half, and Noah Pohl had one punt for 35 yards, and then earlier in this third quarter had a punt for 39 each, pinning Clarion inside of their own 20-yard line, and this kick is going to take a nice bounce and will be grabbed. That's Muhammad on the return, heading far side to the 30. Penalty marker down as he gets outside the numbers to the 40, cutting back to his left across midfield, and gets taken down at the Ram 45-yard line. That's going to be a block in the back, back at the 25-yard line. Yeah. So 
And you can come back about another 35 to 40 yards off that return. 235 remaining here in the ball game. 40-17, the Shepherd lead over Clarion. Again, Clarion was hoping to improve to 3 and 0 for the first time since 2015. It is a block in the back. And that year they started 7 and 0 on the season. Other seasons for Clarion, it has not been a fun era since 2010. So not a fun decade. 2010, 4 and 7. 11 was 3 and 8. 2012, 4 and 7. 2013, another 4 and 7 campaign. 2014, 2 and 9. Again, that's 7 and 4. 2015 and 2016, another 4 and 7 year. 2017, just 1 and 10. And last year, another 4 and 7 season. So if there's one thing you can say about this Clarion team this decade, it's Four and seven's been a pretty average record for them. So from their own 14, after that illegal block penalty gets marked off on that punt return, clearing in football and on first down, Clemens out there at quarterback, taking that to snap and handing it off, and McGriff will get a yard to the 15 and nothing more. Again, a good push by that Ram defensive front in uh, Kevon Bowman, a part of making that tackle. Second down and nine. Clock winding, 218 and counting. It looks like it's just a matter of getting the final moments off this clock as Shepard holds a commanding 40 to 17 lead. And Matt, I know these aren't a PSAC East games for Shepard, but you got to like that Shepard's going to start 2 and 0 against PSAC opponents. Clemens to throw deep along that far side as an open receiver who runs underneath of it and makes the grab. Quinn Zenoble has been their Quinn top Zenoble receiver. The Goes out of bounds on that far Garrett. side at the Ram 40-yard line. That pass completion line. covering 45 yards. First down. I got them at 18 first downs today. It's not like they haven't at times moved the football, but have not been able to find pay dirt enough against this Ram defense have not been able to keep up with the Ram offense. On first down and 10 from the Shepherd 40, a minute 38 in county. Clements to throw again, lofts it deep along that far side. Penalty marker is down, and let's see That's what we're going to get. There is a flag on the play. We're going to get holding on Shepherd. That one is going to go on the defensive back. Chigozzi on a query. Holding. Defense number eight. <laughs> Ten Plus 10 on the First defensive down. hold. All right. I'm on 16 penalties on officially 164 yards for Shepard. Don't finalize that number yet. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> believe me, I'm not. I'm not. And moves that football down to the 30 in Ram territory. Clemens on first down. Ram showing blitz. Also, and the tackle on the left side moved early. Yep, just lost his balance. You could tell that he knew as soon as he twitched that he wasn't going on the right cadence. Tried to, to catch his balance as he was in a two-point stance and almost hit the deck trying to catch his balance, but moved enough that a pretty easy call. 12 penalties, 82 yards unofficially on Clarion. So that's 28 penalties for over 200 yards between the two teams combined. Back to throw, Clemens being hit, he's not going to get the pass away. Sacked on the play by Kyle Smith, the blitzing linebacker. Does the, the Alfred Morris throw it up and hit a bomb over the fence? Ah, uh, the sack for a loss of eight yards. That was a first down and about 15 will bring up a second down. We call it 23. Inching closer to that one-minute mark, 105, and counting in. I think if I'm clearing here, I'm running the ball once or twice and not risking your quarterback getting hers. We already saw Aproyos leave with an injury earlier in this game after he got clobbered. They're going to go deep here. Clemens throwing deep along the near side. Catch made at the 10 and into the end zone Dana goes Jackson, Dana Jackson, a 5'11 senior wide out, 43 yards on the score. And looking at the body language of Shepard defensive coordinator Josh Klein, always easy to pick out on the sideline, where's the red hat? And he is not happy at all on that play. I think that is going to be one that is going to be a firm talking to, if you will, on the sideline when the defense comes off because uh, no reason if you're Shepard. Obviously, you have some points to give, plenty of points to give at this point in the game, but you still got to have your head in the game. No reason to give a touchdown there. Metzger for the PAT. It is up and it Metzger is through. Is Let's take a break. 
A 60 second break, 46 seconds left in this one and Shepard leading Clarion now 42-24. For over 36 years, Green Tree Realty has been helping the Shepherdstown community find a place to call home. Our friendly team is ready to help you navigate the market and is your trusted resource complete with a wealth of experience and local knowledge. For those looking to buy land, commercial property, or a home, we'll help you find the perfect fit. From staging and negotiations to closing and beyond, we're with you every step of the way. Hello, I'm Michael Falk, a lifelong resident of West Virginia, husband and father. I worked my way through school and life with honesty, hard work and determination. These principles have served me well in athletics, education, farming and aviation and have carried me through years of fighting for a more accountable government at the local and state level. These same core principles will allow me to serve you well in Charleston. I believe true leadership is sticking your neck out for right even when it goes against the establishment. You can help me put principle over politics and beat the odds one more time. By Mike Folk for Governor, accountable, ethical, responsible. Find out more at Folk, the number four, WV.com. Four plays, 86 yards, minute 49 seconds for Clarion, 43 yards on that touchdown pass from Clemens to Jackson. 40 24 is that Ram lead. <laughs> Gotta call the fair catch before you catch the football there, Devin. Devin Phelps <laughs> catching that popped up kick along the near side Devin numbers Phelps. at the 40. And after catching it, throwing the hand in the air and then realizing I better get down. Oh, that was a good one. I can't wait to see him on Monday. Devin doing an internship with the station. And I can't wait to bring that up because basically all he did right there is catch it and wave at the uh, at Claire and kicking the football. Um, please don't hit me. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm giving up right now. I surrender. I surrender. <laughs> I'm wearing all white. I'll take my jersey off and wave it. <laughs> well, the Rams will send that offensive unit out for a chance to kneel on the football. Should take two of them, I believe. If they do it right, may only take one. Yeah, Tyson Bajan run around a little bit and then hit hit the deck. Well, they're going to go ahead and hand it off. Shaquan Dyson being hit in the backfield gets back to the line of scrimmage before being taken down. And that'll do it. Good job by the officials not not immediately starting the uh, the clock and taking their time setting the football. And, yeah, Shepard won't have to snap it again. The play clock hasn't started. 27 seconds and counting, and Shepard's going to improve to 2-1. and one. A 40-24 to 24 victory started a little slow today for the Rams, but albeit that's been the M.O. for Clarion this season. When you looked at their numbers coming in, they had outscored their opponents in the first half of play in particular with 34 to nothing in the first quarter and 34 to 6 in the second quarter. Shepard well, uh, fell behind early but rallied, and they go on for the 40-24 to 24 win. The clock has hit zeros. The teams are meeting at the midfield stripe, and we'll send it back to the studio and take a two-minute timeout. When we come back, we'll get into today's post-game show. We will take a look at numbers from this one, recap the score, and get scores from around the PSAC, and as well, we'll set you up for our next broadcast. we got to name our electrifying play of the game as well, our player of the game, all on the post-game show after this timeout. Again, your final, Shepard 40, Clarion 24. This is Shepard Ram Football on TV 10. Let's talk trash, because when it comes to trash, you have options. Panhandle Dumpsters is a local family-owned garbage hauling company serving both residential and commercial customers with weekly trash pickup, dumpster service, yard waste pickup, and ball pickups, too. Panhandle Dumpsters will give you a free trash can and provide curbside service for just $23 a month. Panhandle Dumpsters features a fleet of quieter, eco-friendly garbage trucks, thereby reducing the noise usually associated with pickup. Switch now and save up to 30%. Call 833-DUMP-STR, panhandledumpsters.com. My name is Monica. I'm an elementary school teacher. My name is Mitch. I'm a graphic design specialist. We have four children. Currently we have life and auto insurance with Erie. Our agent is helping us to move our homeowner's insurance to Erie as well. They've always been a good company and good customer service. If anything ever happens to me, my family will be protected. Your local Erie agent in Martinsburg is Smallwood and Small Insurance. Get a quote at smallwoodandsmall.com. I picked Shepherd University because I'm not just a number. One of the things that surprised me is how friendly everyone is. I like being able to walk down the street and have the professors recognize me my name. I'm constantly learning. But it also has taught me so much about myself and about 
what I want to do with my future. The location at Shepherd is amazing. Cities like Washington DC, Baltimore only about an hour, hour and a half away. You just gotta see it. Once you see it, it just takes your heart. It's the post game show. As we recap the scoring, bring you stats and analysis, scores from around the PSAC and Super Region 1, the Division 1 Top 25, and the latest on the West Virginia University Mountaineers and Marshall University Thundering Herd. Let's get it started as we go back to the field and rejoin our TV 10 broadcast team. We welcome you back into Memorial Stadium here in Clarion, Pennsylvania, getting into our post-game show, which is brought to you by Smallwood Small Insurance in Martinsburg, your total insurance solution. They're at 121 Administrative Drive, phone 304-263-3361. Matt Miller along with Matt Crawford, Caleb Valero's at the studio, Eric Sterick and John Alderton, our on-site producers and cameramen for today's TV 10 broadcast of Shepherd Ram football. Well, Matt, here's how it played out as we look back through the scoring in this one. And, uh, well, it was Clarion who would strike first. Uh, Jeff Clemens recovering a fumble in the end zone for the first score of the game. The extra point made it 7 0 Clarion. Shepard quickly answered as Dylan Brewer caught a 61 yard TD pass from Tyson Bajan, but the extra point kick was blocked. And at that time, I don't know about you, but I thought, oh, no. Because yeah. that point can mean so much as a game played out. Shepard trailed. 7-6, to six, and that was the score going into the second quarter. In quarter number two, very early on, James Metzger hit a 42-yard field goal for Clarion, putting them out in front 10-6. to six. And then Shepard put a field goal up and through, but a penalty allowed the Rams to take the three points off the board, take the football at the two-yard line. They're able to get the two-yard TD pass from Tyson Bajan to Alex Wetzel. Shepard took their first lead of the day. 13 to 10. That that came at the 731 mark of quarter number two. Sorry about that. There's a wallet somewhere. David Clark, and it, to the press box. I'm David afraid Clark. there may be a ringing in my ear as well. <laughs> Folks, we're on the top of the press box, and the loudspeaker system is just to our left. I'm sure you've heard it throughout the course of the uh, telecast, and I did not expect that, and that threw me off just a moment. All right, so the Rams take a 13-10 to 10 lead, 3.46 to go in the second. Deontay Glover catches a 24-yard pass from Tyson Bates, and the Rams go up 20-10, to 10, and on the last play of the first half, Hayden August Scriven with a 38-yard field goal, and Shepard led 23-10 to at the break. The Rams, with the football to start the second half, put together a nice drive, but, well, it sputtered, and enter Noah Pohl. Has he been awesome punting, pinning teams deep, a 39-yard kick that put Clarion at their own one-yard line. After three plays and out, the punt gave the Rams good field position at the 46 of the Golden Eagles, and the Rams put together a five-play 46-yard drive, 25 yards on the touchdown pass as Bajan again hit Deontay Glover. Shepard took that lead out to 30-10. to They would make it 33-10 to with 11.30 to play in the game, capping a 17-play 47-yard, eight-minute drive, 37 yards on the field goal for Hayden August Scriven. Again, 33-10, to 10, the Ram lead at that point. Shepard with their ninth possession of the day, putting together a four-play, 33-yard drive after one of the Rams' uh, four interceptions on the day as a defense. It was a 40-yard touchdown pass as Tyson Bajan found Devin Phelps on a fourth and 17. That put the Rams in front 40 to 10. The last two scores of the day belong to Clarion as they would get a five yard touchdown pass from Jeff Clemens going to Khalik Mohammed with 550 left. That made it 40 to 17, Shepard. And then with 46 seconds left, Clemens connected with Dana Jackson from 43 yards out, and that made it 40 to 24. And that is today's final. Shepard put together a complete football game today, and I think that's what a lot of people, myself included, wanted to see them do. We've seen them have two good first halves, and we've seen them scrape by and get a win against Mercyhurst last week. They weren't able to hold on and get the win against Ohio Dominican in week one. Uh, but I wanted to see them come out and play a complete football game today, and that's exactly what they did. The defense 
had issues early, but with good coaching and good adjustments by the players on the field, they were able to make the adjustments they needed to and truly, for the most part, stop Clarion from the majority of this football game. And offensively, start to finish, I thought they played very well. The only thing I will say, they still have to figure out the run game. Yes. The run game is still not up to Shepard's standards. And I'm sure it'll come at some point in the season, uh, but I think that as long as they can they keep building off of what they did today, I think that's right now the only piece they're missing. Well, there you go. The Rams with the victory now improved to 2-1. and one. Back-to-back wins for them. Clarion falls to 2-1 and one as their modest two-game winning streak to open the season snapped here today. Once again, the Rams getting the victory by the final score of 40 to 24. When we come back, we'll run the numbers, have our electrifying play of the game and our player of the game as well. This is Shepard Ram football on TV 10. Maytag knows extra dirty clothes need extra cleaning power. That's why the power of the extra power button makes Maytag extra powerful. Wow. Dirt doesn't stand a chance against this kind of power. Get a load of this. That laundry is stacked. Not bad, huh? The Maytag Extra Power Button. More muscle to tackle the tough job. My name is Monica. I'm an elementary school teacher. My name is Mitch. I'm a graphic design specialist. We have four children. Currently we have life and auto insurance with Erie. Our agent is helping us to move our homeowner's insurance to Erie as well. They've always been a good company and good customer service. If anything ever happens to me, my family will be protected. Your local Erie agent in Martinsburg is Smallwood and Small Insurance. Get a quote at smallwoodandsmall.com. They're my closest friends. We've been through a lot together. Seeing our kids off to college, Kelly losing her mom, my 50th birthday, I trust them with so much. So when it came to my finances, I trusted Kelly's referral to her Ameriprise advisor. Beth gives me the comprehensive advice that helps me feel confident my financial future is secure. With the right financial advisor, life can be brilliant. Ameriprise Financial. Back again here at Memorial Stadium in Clarion, Pennsylvania. Time for our post-game numbers brought to you by the Mirius Group and Ameriprise Financial Advisors. Phil McCoy and John Everson, give them a call with your financial questions at 304-263-4343 or stop by 1270 Winchester Avenue in Martinsburg. Matt, what do we have as our final totals? For the teams themselves, starting with Clarion, 24 points of rushing the football, 30 carries, 101 yards total. Uh, passing, it was 16 for 28. Four interceptions between the two quarterbacks, Proyos and Clemens. They finished with 205 yards through the air, 20 first downs on the game. Time of possession for Clarion, 28 minutes and 15 seconds. Third down conversions, two of seven. For the Shepherd University Rams, uh, 40 points. They had that on 25 first downs. Rushing the football, 25 attempts, just 78 yards. That really has to improve at some point in this season. Passing the football, another fantastic day for Tyson Bajan. Uh, 30 for 45, 394 yards. No interceptions today. I really think that level of his game improved uh, from the first two games of the year. The interceptions were returned for 29 yards total. Uh, time of possession, 31 minutes and 45 seconds. Third down conversion rate, 4 of 12. You'd like that to improve just a little bit as well, but 2 for 3 on a fourth down conversion. So that's the number you really like to see when they need it in the crunch time. Individual numbers starting with Clarion. A pass in the football again. Jeff Clemens, 11 for 18. One interception, 169 yards. Two touchdowns and was sacked twice. Michael Proyos, 5 for 10. Three interceptions, so almost as many interceptions as he had completion just 36 yards on the day. He left with an injury in the third quarter. A rushing the ball, Malik McGriff, 16 rushes for 54 yards. Uh, Proyos finished with three carries for 30 yards. Scott Florence, mostly in the first half, four carries for 19 yards. In fact, that may have all been in the first half. 
receiving. Quinzen Noble, uh, four catches for 88 yards. Khalik Muhammad, four catches for 39 yards. Malik McGriff, three receptions for 14 yards, while Terrell Ford, two receptions for 11 yards. Moving on to the Shepherd Rams. Throwing the football, we mentioned Tyson Bagent, 30 for 44, 394 yards, five touchdowns, and was only sacked one time. And Matt, you were right, 0 for 1 as a team. So that spike does go down as a team stat. We needed some clarification on that, and we got that clarification. So thank you to the uh, stat department here. Rushing the football, Deontay Glover, eight carries for 25 yards. Shaquan Dyson, four carries for 18 yards. Ty Hebron, four carries, 18 yards as well. And Ronnie Brown, five carries for 10 yards. On the outside, it was Dylan Brewer for catching nine passes. Another fantastic week for him. 164 yards and a touchdown. That 61-yard touchdown pass, his long on the day. Deontay Glover, five receptions, 75 yards, and a pair of scores, both on those wheel routes up the left side in the third and fourth quarter. Uh, Devin Phelps, two receptions, 53 yards, and a touchdown. Those are your stats from this one. Again, Shepard getting the win, 40-24. And those stats are brought to you by the Mirius Group and Ameriprise Financial Advisors, John Everson and Phil McCoy. They're at 1270 Winchester Avenue in Martinsburg, or phone them at 304 263 Four three four three. Two more things to take care of. Electrifying play of the game. That 61-yard scoring strike to Dylan Brewer that got the Rams on the board at the beginning of the game was an early candidate. Do you have a better one in mind? No, just because I mentioned it at halftime. Just that whole play design and the execution of that play was perfect. I'm not sure you could have run that play any better, so that's my vote for the electrifying play of the game. It's brought to you by Orsini's Appliance in Martinsburg, offering top names in kitchen and laundry appliances like Amana, Maytag, Gen Air, KitchenAid, and Whirlpool. And for you grill masters, check out the line of Traeger Wood Fired Grills. Get more online at Orsini's.com. And we need to wrap up our post-game show naming our player of the game, a service of Hagerstown Ford. Look, you could give it to Tyson Bajan, I think, every week through these first three weeks. And again, you got to love the way that he performed today. How about on that defensive side? Antonio Fox sat out the first half after the targeting penalty in the second half last week. Came in and picked off two passes in that second half. The defense really uh, had another good game, despite the 24 points on the board. Where are you going? Uh, Dylan Brewer, another great day receiving. Well, what do you like? I think you give it to Tyson Bajan for this reason. We gave it to the two receivers last week with uh, Dylan Brewer and Devin Phelps. And I give it to Tyson Bajan for this reason. He cut down on the interceptions. He didn't throw a pick. There was not a play that was even close to being intercepted today. And just, again, played one whale of a football game, 394 yards, five touchdowns, and didn't risk the football at any time, so my vote for a player of the game is sophomore quarterback Tyson Bajan. Yep, I would agree with that, and that is a service of Hagerstown Ford, changing the car buying experience. Find out more online at FordofHagerstown.com or stop by 1714 Massey Boulevard in Hagerstown. All right, we wrap up our Smallwood Small Insurance postgame show by looking ahead to what is next for both of these teams. We're going home. What's that? Homecoming. Homecoming? Homecoming. What's home? Haven't seen that in the last couple of weeks. Ram Stadium, Shepherdstown. You want to be there next week, 1 o'clock? I will be there. 1 o'clock? Is that the scheduled kick time? It is. It is. That means we're on the air at 12.30. Cutstown is coming to town. They had a victory today, so they'll be feeling good heading into that matchup. And a key matchup because th that's the first matchup, Matt, that goes into those East division standings these first couple of games while it's been PSAC opponents they've been West opponents non-division opponents so while it might hurt your overall record the Rams now face their first East Conference or East Division test yeah looking forward to it again it's going to be a great atmosphere of the first piece that game at Rams Stadium Again, the only home game so far against Ohio Dominican. So looking forward to that one. Homecoming, always a great atmosphere. Yeah. So can't wait to be there for that one. Clarion will be at Gannon next week, and that will also be a 1 o'clock kickoff. Well, that's going to wrap it up for us here at Memorial Stadium in Clarion, Pennsylvania. Thanks to each of our sponsors supporting our coverage of Shepherd Ram of football on TV10. We thank you for joining us for today's broadcast. Thanks as well goes out to both head coaches, uh, sports and